Hey, what's up, Tack Warehouse? Welcome to another Tack Warehouse Live. It's been a little hot minute since we've done one. It was uh, ICAST, we were doing this. Uh, heck, it's been a while now, huh? Yeah, we had the big, weird 2020 <laughs> ICAST live event. Uh, we've taken a little hiatus, yeah. Corey, uh, but we're back with the Daiwa Power Hour. Everything new from Daiwa with Tackle Warehouse Live today. I'm excited, Corey. I'm pretty pumped up. I didn't know we were, I guess we're going with Power Hour. That was kind of an in-house neighbor call of the show. I guess that's what we're calling it now, the Power Hour. I like it. It, it is now. Yeah, and, official. Uh, and really, you know, that that's what it's about, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, it's about coming out with, with a bunch of new, powerful, exciting new products and, and uh, bringing them in one fell swoop with Daiwa Pros, Tackle Warehouse Pros, and Daiwa Staffers. Uh, it, it's going to be great. And there's a giveaway, right? We do have a trivia question. We'll announce the trivia question in a little bit, get some time for everybody to kind of get on and kind of watch the live. But once we bring in Cody Meyer, we'll throw a trivia question out to you guys. And the winner of the trivia question uh, gets a Daiwa prize pack. Uh, I'll get the official prize pack with a couple of new baits, some new reels for you guys to check out. And once we announce the trivia question, we'll get uh, the answers to that. But, and if you got other questions, so we're gonna have, we got Mark Mills from Dial coming on in a second here. We got uh, Jared Lintner, Cody Meyer, and Brent Ayler joining us. So if you guys got questions for them in general, but really about the products they're talking about, just let us know and we can get the questions passed through on social media and, uh, and get them on to us. So again, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, get your questions on there and we'll get them on the show if we can. So absolutely, um, you know, to, to start everything out, we, we got a special guest from Dialer, right? We do. And, and essentially a co-host for this show. He is, he's, he's going to be on the whole time. He is the Daiwa guru. This guy knows Daiwa inside and out products and everything. He is the man. So if we can, let's bring Mark Mills in the room. How you doing, Mark? Yo, Corey, Joey, what's up guys? How's it going? Doing good. Doing yeah. good, buddy. This is going to be awesome, dude. The power hour is here, man. We got some great pros. This is going to be rad. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped. So we got a lot of cool stuff up. Um, how you been, Mark? You been doing any much fishing at all? You doing any saltwater stuff, I've, freshwater? I've been, doing you been just good, hanging man. out? I've been fishing a lot. I've been fishing a lot. I've been doing a little a lot of saltwater fishing. You know, Daiwa's based here in California. So yeah, catching some big tuna. We all know that. You know, I've been bass fishing. I just put a bunch of money into my bass boat, getting it ready. Going to fish bass this year, both uh, uh, the saltwater side and the freshwater side. So I'm, I'm back fishing a lot, which is super awesome which allows me to really get in place and help, you know, develop the products with the pros and being out on the water. So um, it's good. Uh, wanted to do some saltwater fishing this weekend. It looks like it's going to blow. So I'm going to run over to Diamond Valley and do a little freshwater bass fishing instead. So it's been good. You know, it's weird. We're stuck here, you know, going to work here and there. We can't travel. So um, the good thing is I'm getting to fish at home. And, you know, people wonder, it's like, you know, you get to travel, you get to fish all over. That's what that's cool about this job and being lucky to do that. But, you know, once in a while, you like to fish on your home bodies of water. And I've really been able to capture and do that again and not have to travel. And in one sense, that's been good. But the bad thing is that I haven't been able to go out and fish with any of my buddies or the pros. So, you know, that's the downfall. But we're getting through this. Definitely. Sure. I'm definitely looking forward to getting back out on the road again and kind of hanging out with the guys and hanging out on the show and just doing some filming on the road again. It's, it's, uh, it's work, but it, it's a fun part of the job. You get to hang out with, with yourself and all the other Tackle Worlds pros. Sure, and you know what? It's offered us the opportunity to plan great events like this yeah. uh, uh, with, with Daiwa this year. And I know Mark and a few of the other guys at Daiwa behind the scenes have been working on, uh, we, you know, we've been working on this power hour now for, <laughs> for a couple of months. So yeah. I'm glad to finally see it happening. You know, and it's really tough because you got pros that are going here and they're traveling and you know, we're trying to organize with those guys. This is tough to do. So you guys at Tackle Warehouse have done a wonderful job of getting everybody organized to knock this thing out. And we got perfect time of year. It's holiday season. You know, we got all kinds of stuff coming down the road for November and December. So this is great. Like well, it. Mark, it's almost like you knew you, uh, for, you needed to do a segue. And I guess I'm stepping on Joey's toes already. He's supposed to do the segue. Absolutely. But a perfect holiday gift, right, Joey? Absolutely. That's <laughs> correct. We got the DVEC carbon case uh, travel spinning combo. Now, uh, this is a this has both the rod and the reel in this little case. Uh, if you could take it away, Mark, and tell us all about this. Yeah, you know what? This is great. You know, you guys at Tackle Warehouse have a, a ton of guys are very influential fishermen, and they want to go out, and some guys are pros and stuff, but, you know, not everybody, you know, in, in general is a pro, so this is great, but if you are a pro or you're a guy that fishes a lot, and you just need to get out on the water. You need to hit a pond. You need to go travel. When you get to traveling again, 
This is perfect. It's keeping everything together. You've got a multi-piece sweet fire rod in here and a sweet fire reel. I haven't opened mine up. Actually, Corey's, Corey's opening in the present. Um, in a carbon case, comes with a little, little tiny box in there as well. So this is perfect for you could throw in the back of your car. You know, you're driving down the road. You want to see a pond you want to stop at. Um, you know, you're coming home from work. You know, like, I've had a tough day at work or whatever. I'm going to slide down to the harbor, catch spotted bay bass, make a few casts in the ocean off the rocks. You can do whatever you want with this. It's just a great, perfect stocking stubber. Uh, it's a good price. Somewhere it comes in a range of around 69 bucks, somewhere in that price point. It's just, it's perfect. Everybody needs to have one. I know when I was growing up and working down at the landing, I actually had one of these in the back of my Nissan Sentra that I just grabbed and went out and did some fishing like every night and made two or three casts. It was just a good way to kind of release and enjoy what I like to do. Yeah, a really cool setup. Like I said, keep in the back of the truck. I myself, I've got a few rods keep in the back of my truck, get a little perch fishing in when we get and when we can, but they're just kind of hanging on the back of my truck. And even on the way into work today, actually, oddly enough, one kind of fell off the back seat, which is never a good thing. And this was really cool. It has its own travel set, so it keeps everything protected, nice in there, nice organized, and keeps you kind of, you know, ready to, ready to fish on moment's notice, but also keeps it in this, and this is a pretty high quality looking case there too. Absolutely. Yeah, Anybody yeah. that's seen Corey's truck knows why <laughs> stuff falls out the back. Uh, he's got, he's loaded for, for any possible situation that might arise. Uh, but yeah, this is just such a great compact uh, little product. You can throw it behind the seat. doesn't take up a lot of room. And hey, when you pass that farm pond that just looks perfect, uh, you can pull over and, and hog up a big one right there, huh? Yeah, very yeah, cool. It, it's great. It's just a super thing. It's like I said, it's a great stocking stuffer. And everybody that fishes should just throw one of these in their car. You never know when you're going to want to use it. Sure. And now these, Corey, are available to buy now at uh, TackleWarehouse.com. They are right now, so go ahead and pick one up for yourself and uh, get some pond fishing going. Yeah. Right? yeah. Anything. One for no me. No doubt about it. I, I guess that's going to Joey, so. Yeah. yeah. Going in my truck. Yeah. Well, cool. So up next, we have, go ahead, uh, we got some other, a new bait from Daiwa, and this is the new, the DC, sorry, the SC Shad 5. Is that correct, Mark? Yeah, it's the SC Shad 5. It's, it's a great bait. Um, Dio has been known for years of really making some great crankbaits and baits. And in the past, they kind of got away from it for a while. We stopped bringing them over. You guys are familiar with that. And in the last four or five years, we've really decided to take a lot of the cool baits that we've built in Japan or whatever and bring them over to the United States. Um, some have been around. You know, this little SC Shad, actually... It, it's, it goes down, I actually have a box right here. It's kind of, there you go, there's a, I'm, I'm kind of far away. That's kind of things you have to do now with COVID. You have to set yourself up. Comes in some great packaging. Um, it's about two inches long. I'm trying to pull this out here real quick. And uh, what's cool about it is that uh, it's kind of a match the hatch type of bait. You guys can see yeah, there. We've got a close up over here, Mark. We've got another camera here. We can show them a nice, good, good oh, close up over here. Better. That's perfect. So it, it'll, it'll swim down about three to five feet. Um, it's great for guys who want to match the hatch with their bass fishing, but also great for panfish, great for rainbow trout. I was just up in the Sierras two weeks ago, um, slow trolling these for rainbow trout, throwing them in the streams because it doesn't dive too, too deep. Um, but that was all, like I said, they're, we've been known to make some really good baits. They swim real good. They have great sound. They're very high quality, good high end products. Um, and all around, this is a, this is a good, good bait for a multitude of, uh, species from trout to panfish to bass to you name it anything you want to go and, and, and catch absolutely mark you know it, it you, about you talked about the too, guys. what's what, that sorry I, I missed you what'd you say it comes in about six different colors as well so there's a multitude of colors that it comes with great great no you you were talking about the uh the the multi multi-species mm -hmm. aspect uh of this bait here and of course uh crappie and trout applications but really this falls into that uh, that shad crankbait, the old mm -hmm. balsa shad crankbait yeah. uh, range of, of baits. Uh, for me, uh, you know, this is something I'd be thinking about in the middle of winter. Uh, that being said, I just actually, last time I talked to Mark, I was pre-fishing for a tournament where the fish were on bait about this big. And that little guy you're holding looks exactly like what the fish were feeding on. And they, the fish would be blowing all around me and I couldn't get a bite. Um, so I'm wishing I had one of those last week. I might have done better in the tournament, Corey. You did okay. I think you had a good event overall. We're not going to get into it. Right. We'll, we'll bring it up. <laughs> but hey, it, it is a perfect little size bait. Actually, it, 
uh, cameraman Dan was using this bait a couple months ago. I won't say where he's trying to keep it on, on the DL right now, but uh, he was getting pretty good on this little bait and, and, and wanted to get some for himself. So he already, he's been fishing them for a while and a big fan. It, it's a perfect little, just, I mean, like even right now, I mean, this is a great little size bait. It's a fall, yeah. winter. It's just a cool down near year round species, any species really. Multi-species deal, yeah. absolutely. And it definitely falls into, you kind of with its bill, it kind of falls in between a jerk bait and a crank bait. You can actually just do a nice constant retrieve or if you want to fish it like a jerk bait, you can do that too. Like I said, you're falling down somewhere between three to five feet, depending on what pound, um, you know, fluorocarbon or monofilament that you're using. Uh, but all around, it, it's a good bait, and and all these things run very, very true. They're tight. Like I said, Daiwa makes some very good, high quality baits. Uh, some of the best out there when it comes to that. Um, you know, we're known on saltwater with salt pro minnows, the double clutch. There's all kinds of cool baits out there, but this SC Shad is just, like I said, it's perfect. And nothing's more frustrating. You know it, Jolie. When that stuff's blowing up and you just can't go down small enough, but you got to do it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, speaking of small enough, I do uh, really want to push for uh, a new size in this. A seven would be killer. Oh, yeah. Just a hair bigger. Uh, it, I do have a question about the bait, though, Mark. Uh, this yes, is, it's a suspending bait. Is that correct? That is correct. It is a suspending bait, yes. Cool. So you can, you, you you, just like there, Mark was talking about, it, you can rip then, that bait, you can pause it. And, and and it's gonna sit right there and, and stay in the strike zone for a long time, Corey. Definitely, it's a, it's a really cool bait. It's a bunch of cool colors. And if you guys wanna pick it up for yourselves, it's actually available right now on TAC or else, so make sure to go check those out. Very cool. Thanks for taking us through that one, Mark. Uh, no it looks like, go, uh, go ahead, sorry, Mark. Oh, I just said thanks a lot, I appreciate it. No hey, problem. you bet. Well, uh, we got more work for you to do. Uh, up next, we got the Soul Inshore Spinning Rod Edition. Is that right? Yeah, this was kind of a fun deal. So this, uh, um, I spent last year, before the whole COVID deal, I spent nine trips down to Florida, um, really working on this. So this, it's a TD Soul, Team Iowa Soul. Um, it, it, it actually, if you, you can see here, I don't know if you have one in front of you, it is an inshore rod. So we know that people tackle warehouse fish, saltwater, freshwater, everything. So this is an inshore rod. It was really, really developed uh, in the Southeast uh, for, for their species of fish over there, um, snook, tarpon, um you know all that kind of stuff uh and uh it's been like I said it's designed that it's got our fuji faz light guides on it we have a special Daiwa lockdown reel seat um that fits your reel really nicely and it also locks on the back it's got a back lock nut on it um you can see it's kind of what td soul what would this td soul look so you kind of have the the sunrise of the morning or the evening look to it um it looks real pretty in the sun so the whole rod's black but then it kind of pops with this metallic gold and blue, it looks really nice. They all have a hook keeper. Um, and like I said, it's a great setup. On this setup, we, we do both spinning and conventional on that as well. Um, but there's crossovers with any type of fishing, but the rod series is pretty much designed for the south, Southeast and fishing, snook, tarpon, permit, all that kind of stuff down there. Um, it'll tie up the Eastern seaboard into stripers and stuff as well. Um, but it, it, it's a real nice setup uh, for, like I said, fishing inshore and all that stuff. We Absolutely. do them in mainly core candles, but we have a couple EVA models in there because some of these tarpon guys like the EVA rods, they like a cork rod. So we did the same models like the, the eight foot heavy and the eight foot extra heavy in both an EVA and a cork with the exact same actions. Sure, sure. Mark, you were talking about the, uh, the, the sole, the, the, uh, the sunrise look to it. Uh -huh. It was just reminded me of the old Daiwa Sunburst logo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we all know Daiwa's moved moved on uh, from that to, to the next generation that's that that's pushed them so so far uh, with, with the DVEC logo behind you now. Uh, but it, it's it's kind of cool, a little nostalgia there with the with the sun theme, uh, the sunburst tying in with the old logo. That's that's a really cool deal, and uh, it sounds like a do. great a great new series of rods uh, for it, it, for it's inshore well a little crossover there. Yeah, there's definitely some crossover. Um, that's why we did it. You know, we we wanted to try and bring that name back, and we're like, where do we want to put it? Do we want to put it in the fast world, the freshwater world. We're like, you know what? Let's do this. And I had this concept when I when we were developing the rod and. Uh, nowhere in our office did a lot of it, but as far as the, the overall thought process of where we we're going, the TD soul and sun, and I, I got this picture looking at across uh, the, the, the water and I saw the sun coming up and I'm like, you know what, let's go with TD soul. Let's turn this whole rod into that kind of look. So there was a process of why we came up with it and the overall scheme and look of the rod 
all goes to that direction. Absolutely. Early in the morning, nothing but potential. Uh, it's a great feeling that we all know from being on the water. Uh, that, that's the sole inshore spinning rods from Daiwa, available for pre-order now, uh, hoping for delivery soon here, Corey. Definitely. And another yeah. rod we got for pre-order, actually, we don't even have one on here. I don't, I don't know if Mark, if you even have one, I'll try to get an image pulled up here on the site if we can. But uh, okay. it's, this is another pre-order rod, it's another travel rod. It's, the, it's called the Daiwa Travel Spinning Rod. Yeah, it actually goes off of our crossfire, and I'm going to show you the, the whole cool box. So boom, right there. Check that out. It's almost pre-freaking wrapped for Christmas. You're stoked, you know what I mean? So what this is, it's a rod and reel combo. Um, it's coming in a little bit more of a price point there. Um, you're looking at somewhere in the range, I think it's about 129, 169, somewhere there, but it's actually a telescopic rod. So for years, everybody kind of got away from the telescopic rods, and there's a benefit between a multi-piece rod and a telescopic rod. Um, the telescopic rods are nice because everything's right there. You don't have to start fitting any all your pieces together. You can just take them, pull the rod tip out, it all comes apart, it all comes together, and then you just push it back together, put it in your car. Um, so it is a kind of a benefit. We are bringing back some telescopic rods. Um, you know what that's really cool about a telescopic rod? is any young kid that likes to go down to the park or what and do fish at one of the regional parks, it's great to have on your bike. It's easy to deal with. You can bring it down and walk through the trees or the bushes. It's just a great, great setup for that. You got it. Perfect, yeah, we've actually got a picture up here on the site. I was gonna get it pulled oh, cool. up. It looks awesome. like Daniel's got it pulled up for us. Daniel and Will, thanks for getting that pulled up. Uh, but yeah, it's nice soft travel bag compacts yeah. down all the way down. Like It is a great little bike rod. It is that little compact thing throwing your bike and, uh, and good to go. It's definitely something to get for the, for the niece and nephews. Absolutely. That's what it, when, I was in, when I was in junior high, I lived net right now about, oh, from Laguna de Gal Lake, Lake, I live about 150, 200 yards away. I used to get on my bike. I had a little dial set up. I'd roll it down and just ride to the bike, go down there, I'd ride the lake, fish a little bit, put it back on my bike and then ride home. It was just a great, and like I said, it's already in a box, easy to wrap, and it's a perfect deal for the holidays coming down the road. And it's about 149. Sure. You know, that, that's a question we get all the time is, uh, you know, what should I get for my uh, brother, sister, mm -hmm. mom, dad, yeah. that's, a, that's a fisher person. And, uh, you know, this is a great, a great place to start, you know, for, for anybody but uh, a, a kid, somebody getting in, into fishing for the first time. Uh, that, you know, we've all got that nostalgia of, uh, like Mark said, riding our bike, getting dropped off at the lake. This is perfect for that deal. Yeah, yeah, I was just talking to my my uh, my, my brothers the other day about how you, back in the day we would ride our bikes an hour and a half ride all the way down to this place called Fox Grove. We never caught anything, but still we caught a few fish. But this has been great because I would have that my rod strapped to the 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 bar of my bike, and it was kind of just pointing out over the tire. And I broke a few rods trying to do that. And if I would have had something like this, probably would have had a few more rods still left over. But hey. nothing's changed, huh, Corey? Hey. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> well, uh, it, anything else to add on this travel combo before we move on? No, it's like I said, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's a basically right off of our uh, Crossfire reel, um, and it's just a great set. It does come in, just so you guys know, it comes in both a cork and an EVA handle rod. So depending on what you like, either or, you can get either cork or EVA, um, but it's really a, a great thing to have. So like I said, now and now, I mean, we know that this year the fishing industry has gone crazy. You know, we've been lucky and fortunate on one end of COVID is that the fishing tackle industry has been amazing. And I go down here and I drive by the lake and you can't believe on how many people are going down there fishing. To have something like this, just throw it on your bike, go fish for a few hours. If you can't do anything and we're locked down or whatever, just go fish and it's, it's perfect. Absolutely. So exciting how many people uh, have started fishing this year. Uh, you, you know, just as, as, as people who love fishing, it's exciting seeing the sport get so much traction this year. Uh, so that's great. And that's the Daiwa Travel Spin Combo uh, yep. available for pre-order on the site right now. Very cool. So if you got, make sure to pick one of those up. Uh, we're going to bring, bring Cody in, talk about a few products here. So I'm going to get him going real quick and get him pulled into the room if we don't mind. Here, give me one second, guys. Let's get Cody going. Sure. Hey, hey, Mills, as much as we love talking to just you, uh, uh, it's time to get the real talent in, right? Pretty warmed up. Now we got the real guys Ready on. Absolutely. Go. Cody Meyer, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. How you guys doing? Good. How you doing, buddy? 
You know, I'm doing good. I apologize here for uh, it's a little bit dark. I'm in Wyoming driving to Florida. So currently I am sitting in my truck right now and uh, traveling across country. It, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little yeah. disappointed. I was hoping we'd be seeing Gomez Adams on today, not necessarily Cody. But uh, I was kind of stocky on the gram the other day and saw you, you guys went all out. Hey, we did. You know what? Halloween in my family, I mean, even prior to kids, has always been a really, really big deal. It's fun. My wife and I love doing it. And now, uh, every year, my daughter or my son, they decide what we're going to be. So, you know, that new Adams Family movie came out last year sometime. And since December of last year, my daughter and my son have wanted to be the Adams Family. So we bought the costumes, we spent all this money uh just for the one night but i'll tell you what it was well worth it uh we had a blast and you know made some great memories man <laughs> so so cody you're in wyoming right now i know where you're headed um but why are you taking such a northern route well so i moved to idaho so um we moved up to idaho back in the summer my wife and i my my family my dad's there been there for about 15 years and so I'm actually just taking off, kind of going all the way across country, the long route. You know, Jared Littner's doing the same, but he's down towards Phoenix right now. Uh, I prefer the southern route just because this time of the year, the snow. But luckily, the weather right now is really nice. So one important question, you've moved up there now. Do we still have access to Lake of the Pines or is that out the window? hundred percent still have access still have the boat <laughs> down there uh my brother-in-law lives there the boat is currently at his house so yes we still have full access to ca go catch those big ones man so now even if we don't uh, it's a little harder now but maybe if you're up in idaho maybe me and daniel or me and joey go down there and steal your boat and your access and not even tell you about it but. that's great yeah you know yeah. i was able to take uh my nephews my my wife's uh sister's sons out to Lake of the Pines and we just wailed on them all morning. Those kids had such a blast. My fingers were raw from unhooking <laughs> fish at the end of the day. Uh, so that's that's just a really special place over there. You sneak out there with Roy? That yeah. really is. Yeah. 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 Roy, how you doing? Shout out Roy Gray. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, so, it, you know, we would love to BS with you all day, but uh, <laughs> we are here to talk some business, Cody. Um, it, it sounds sure. like we got some new new products coming out uh, that, that Cody's uh, lined up to talk about, right, Corey? Yeah, the first one we got from Cody to talk about is the new Tattoo 300 casting mill. Go ahead, Cody, yeah, take so it away. Yeah, so here it is, man. Yeah, so, you know, this is a reel that, um, Corey, we actually, we filmed with this reel back in April. Um, you, you know, and being from California, something throwing swim baits to me is a really really big deal and it just naturally made sense for daiwa they have the whole tattoo of the lineup to add a, a really a big swim bait reel um you know maybe go out to the ocean reel but for me this is going to be a big swim bait reel and you know the a couple key features for me again i apologize apologize it's a little bit dark in here but um we got a close-up of right know, here in studio have, sorry yeah yeah you know, for one, you're going to have, um, you know, a, a bigger, a bigger frame, you know, it's an aluminum frame. It's going to have a really deep spool as well. It's a, um, I believe it's a 43 millimeter aluminum spool, really deep. So you can line up a ton of that big line on there. If you're throwing those big, uh, giant swim baits, those custom, you know, glide baits, whatever it is, you're going to be able to fill up the line. The handle is 110 millimeters. So, that is a very oversized handle, really, really nice. Especially, you know, you think about a big rod, big swim bait, you need that really big handle. Uh, of course, it's gonna have the T-Wing system in here and the Mag Force Z. So same great features that the, the other Tattoolas have, just a really deep spool, bigger frame, aluminum frame, and really just a reel to throw those really big swim baits, in my opinion. Big A-Rigs as well, uh, a must have for the Tattoola lineup. Sure. You know, Cody, uh, you mentioned line capacity. That's such a big deal with that stuff. Uh, if you're throwing straight fluoro, 25, 30 pound test, uh, you run out of it really quick. And, and we've all been waiting, you know, <laughs> the, 
Daiwa came out with Tatula 100, 150 was added, 200. We were waiting for the for the 300 and now uh, it's finally here and I know a lot of people uh, in the industry at Daiwa, pro staffers and customers alike, everybody's excited about this reel. And one thing I'm really excited about is a lot of times new reel comes out and the left hand guys like myself, you have to wait a few months. It's available right now. They've got them. You, you, we have it in left and right hand models available to purchase right now and you can get them for yourself and check them out. Really cool reel. Uh, anything else you want to talk about on the reel itself, Cody? Or? You know, again, it, I mean, it's it's really lightweight for the size of this reel. Um, just, I feel like the aluminum frame is a big deal. You know, you're talking about a, a big bait you're going to be throwing, so it's going to hold up. It's going to be very durable. And, I mean, just, again, you're throwing those big A-rigs, swim baits, even maybe a big giant crankbait. This is going to be a must-have. Extremely smooth, ultimate tournament drag as well. So, very strong drag, you know, for throwing those big, big baits. Yeah, guys, I, I don't know, can you guys still hear me in here? Yeah, we got you, Mark. What do you guys, Mark, let's, let's yeah, get Mark, know, we can see here. The, the one thing I want to hit on this thing really hard is that there's a lot of great, what I call expanded low profile reels in the market. Um, the thing that the, the, the Tatula reel has is this key wing. And what this key wing will do is, especially on baits that are non-aerodynamic, an A-rig, non-aerodynamic, most swim baits, non-aerodynamic, when that line is traveling back and forth and there's a lot of weight there, this is going to really reduce your backlashes too. Um, over above the mag force, when the line goes to one end or the other, the actual overall bait slows down because the line slows down, but the spool doesn't. So this T-wing keeps that spool rotating at a good constant pitch. And that's what gives you your backlash. If that line slows down and the spool doesn't, you've got to over thumb it or backlashes. And this is something that no other maker in the industry has. And that's something to really think about um, when you're looking to purchase a, a swim bait reel. And like I said, Cody said, big handles, aluminum frame, all that. But that T-wing is something and a feature that nobody else has except Iowa in the Tatula lineup. Um, and it's gonna be a great, great setup. Plus it gets somewhere range around 28 pounds of drag. The eight to one gets 24 pounds of drag. We back it off a little bit to beat the gears a little bit uh, easier on that just because of the kind of what you do with the, the heavier gear ratios. But the the 6.2 to 1 and the 7 to 1, um, you're looking at 28.7 pounds of drag pressure. That's a ton. Sure. Yeah, uh, you, you know, that's a ton of drag, way more than you're ever going to need for uh, for typical bass fishing. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these techniques were locking out the drag. Uh, so, yeah, guys hey. are fishing stripers or something like that, you know, they're definitely going to want that in the, in the rivers and stuff, Virginia. Kentucky, all that big striper fishing, it's another great reel for that. Sure, sure. And you know, just practically, uh, the T-Wing uh, really shines in this heavy line stuff, mm -hmm. wide spool, heavy line stuff, like you were saying, Mark. And that's something you can really feel, especially you make a big downwind cast with a very heavy bait or rig or whatever it is, 25 pound line, and you can, on a, on a standard reel, without a T-wing, you can hear that line as it hits the corner and gets a lot of angle. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all friction that's preventing uh, you from maximizing the length of your cast. So uh, just a really cool innovation uh, on a big reel from Daiwa. Uh, really glad to see that, Corey. Definitely, and like I said, it's this, these new big reels have kind of been, uh, not new for a while, but they've been out for a little bit and getting really popular. And uh, I said, the A-Rig Swim Mate, some really cool stuff. I'm stoked to get one for myself and be able to have one on the left hand now. And I said, if you guys will pick them for yourself, go ahead and get them right now. They're on the site, pick them up before we sell out. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, good deal. Absolutely. Uh, well, you know, we got another product coming up next, but before we do, Corey, should we get that trivia question? Yeah, out? let's get the trivia question going. Good call. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, you know, we got this prize package. And, and maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, how, to, how to answer this question to, to win the prize package. Uh, and, and then I'll, I'll present the, the question itself. Cool. So if you guys are watching, whether you're watching on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook right now, we'll have guys monitoring for questions right there. But you get your answer in right there. And uh, the first to get the correct answer is going to win the prize package. We'll announce the winner at the end of the show. So make sure to stick around and see if you win. And then we can get you the information and get that prize pack sent out to you. And I'll have to pull up the prize pack here. I got my computer on me. I'll get the exact prize pack as Joey's kind of telling you what's going on. So here's the question. Which 
of the Tackle Warehouse and Daiwa Pro Staffers. Someone that's sponsored by both Tackle Warehouse and Daiwa. Which was signed first and what year did they start the sponsorship? So the question is, who was the first Tackle Warehouse and Daiwa Pro and what year was the first year of their sponsorship? With Daiwa. With Daiwa. With Daiwa. Sign with Daiwa. So, and the prize pack's gonna be a Tatua 300, a tackle bag we got coming up at the end of the show, some evergreen crankbaits, and a Daiwa Procyon spinning reel, the, L, the new LT spinning reel. So overall, it's $800 plus dollar prize package that you guys can win for the first one to get the right answer. So get your, question, get your answers in down on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and again, at the end of the show, we'll announce the winner. Pretty good, that's something I wanna win. You cannot win. I cannot we, win. I will ask you for your what you think is the answer, but you already you might not know, so I can't ask you. I might this. not know. Uh, my, my bass fishing history is a little spotty <laughs> sometimes. Um, but hey, so right on into uh, our next product, right, Corey? Yeah, your next product is actually a question that came through, oddly enough, sure. from Ro. Hey, you know, this was his question. He wanted to talk about what we're going to talk about next. So, Ro, here's the answer to your question. Yeah, so, so up next, we got the new J Fluoro Samurai fluorocarbon fishing line. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, yeah, so you want, you want me to go? That's it, Cody, you, 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 you it, take Mark? it away, Cody, and then we can get some from our bills. You want to start out? No, let Cody knock it out. He's got it in his hand. I don't have one here. We don't okay. even have it. Yeah, so here it is, guys. So J Fluoro Samurai, I don't know if it's coming up really clear there, but this stuff is unbelievable. This is our premium uh, fluorocarbon. This is the stuff I, I was very spoiled, uh, you know, several years ago. We had the, um, the uh, J Fluoro to come out and then now the J Fluoro Samurai. And I was fortunate enough to test this 100% fluorocarbon. And I'll tell you what, I absolutely fell in love. You know, one thing for me, I, I'm a real light line fisherman i like to do everything but you know that that real light line that six that eight that 10 pound test i personally need a line that is going to be extremely smooth extremely strong and uh castability is going to be a really big thing you know uh just the simple details of how they wind the line on here you know that's a really big deal you know when fluorocarbon when you think about a, a premium fluorocarbon uh, some manufacturers, the way they put the, the line on, you will actually get flat spots in that line. That is what you see when you when you see a guy across the lake uh, making a long, long cast and you can actually see the line uh, glow. And, and, and you don't get that with this J Flora Samurai. Again, extremely smooth, uh, very, very strong. You know, I find myself fishing, you know, say a 20 pound test where I would normally throw like a 15, you know, it's a small diameter, extremely small. So I, I feel more confident with this line. Uh, again, I've used it all the entire year, really started prototyping this a while ago, but made in Japan, 100% fluorocarbon, a huge variety of sizes, uh, comes with a really cool band. And also something to think about in this, in the filler spools, you know, I got a big bulk spool right here, but there's gonna be a line marker on there uh, 220 yard spool. Most spools are around 200 yards. Uh, the problem with them um, when you're when you're winding, say, 100 yards of line on your spool, you, you might wind 150. You might only do 75, and then you're going to come up short. So we have a line marker at the halfway point of the spool. Makes it very easy. Again, just smooth, uh, extremely strong, very small diameter, and tough. I mean, you know, myself, Ishvan Rowe, we've been throwing it all year, and you know, Ish being a huge flipper, power guy, I mean, he cannot stop raving about this stuff as well. So uh, really, really highly recommend this, especially in those tough, you know, fisheries we have out in California, across the country, really, really good fluorocarbon. Absolutely. And, and as Cody alluded to, there's, there's a bunch of uh, sizes that not everybody makes here. Uh, you know, four pound test, five pound test, seven pound test, 22 pound test a lot of you know a lot of times you're doing you're flipping or you're doing some light line fishing and you wish you had a step down mm -hmm. or or a middle space between that 
you know, six and four pound test or that 20 and 25 pound test. It's really awesome having that range uh, of, of sizes. And, and I got to tell you, Corey, uh, you're always complaining about how we get all the cool stuff in the buying office. Uh, we did get advanced samples of this a long time ago and I handed, uh, it, figure. Out. I handed it out to a lot of guys and I, uh, of course kept some for myself. I um, didn't see any of it. I might have forgotten to give Corey one, <laughs> uh, but everyone I gave a spool of this to came back and said, what was that and when's it coming out? Everybody loved it. Uh, and another thing, we were adamant that they made thousand yard spools because we knew that when this it's stuff all, came out, people were gonna need bulk spools because they were gonna fill all their reels with it. Definitely, and uh, one thing I just wanna show you guys, Cody did mention that it comes with uh, this little spool keeper on here that does come with it. You can see here that it just goes around. It comes with the line, it's clear, and it holds your line in there so it's not doing this where it's all coming off and everything so very cool i'm not sure if it comes like that on the thousand yard spool it looks like it does actually so very neat uh one of the questions that uh ro asked when he was asking about this line specifically he was asking is there an application where specifically this line would excel or you'd want to use it for over a, another type of line or where do you see this samurai for a particular application or is it overall it's gonna be this gonna be your go-to for carbon for everything or do you think this might work really well for finesse or flipping or just what are your thoughts on all that Could so for that? me yeah sure absolutely for me it's it's 100 percent my go-to fluorocarbon i mean i i've noticed a difference you know like lake shasta lake oroville you know where some guys are throwing a six pound you can throw an eight pound still get the same amount of bites like like i say a premium fluorocarbon it's invisible underwater so i i um i really highly recommend it for that so i'm going to use it that but then when i'm flipping or crankbait fishing again maybe i'm throwing a deeper diving crankbait you know where guys are throwing that 10 pound 12 pound i can go to like a 14 um, because of the diameter of the line and you get the strength the extra strength and then flipping you know if you're you're flipping. I mean, I have never in my life, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, flip a 25 pound fluorocarbon. I just never, I never really saw the need. And now I was always flipping a 20 and occasionally to have a problem. Now I flip this 25 um, all the time and it fishes better than when I used to flip the, the 20. So why not have the best of both worlds again from me? I, I mean, I, I've noticed a difference drop shotting in brush piles, uh, Lake Lanier, you know, the eight pound, you hang these four or five pound spotted bass. They're hung in the brush pile. Uh, you just, you're not breaking off fish. So really it's going to be my go-to from finesse fishing, you know, throwing a jig. It, you know, it, it holds up really well uh, around structure. It's so strong. I mean, just, I promise you, I, if you throw this line, you're going to, you're going to walk away and go, man, this is, it's going to stay smoother, longer. Um, it casts better. It's more sensitive and it's just really, really, really strong. Well, yeah. I wish I could say, but I agree with you. It sounds like the other guys here at the shop agree with you because they got some of the line. So, uh, hopefully I will get some myself. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to see what mills can, uh, kick down a little bit since Joey gets all the stuff. You don't and... worry about that. Hey, there's another attribute that I want to tell you guys about too. So the four to 10 pound is a much stiffer line than the 12 and above. Um, and that allows you the sensitivity, that thinner diameter, you lose a little bit of sensitivity because it's thin and it stretches. So we've, we've changed kind of the molecular structure between four and 10 pound. So it's a little stiffer. Once you get above 10 into the 12s and above, 15s and that kind of stuff, 17s, it is a little bit stretchier because it's a thicker diameter. So there is some differences there. But guys, those difference in weight pound classes, take that out of the equation. If you look at the overall uh, diameters of the line, we're talking thousands of an inch. That makes a big difference on how your bait's going to move and how you're going to get bit. And that's a couple thousands between a seven pound and a six pound. So you, you got to look at those different you know scenarios. It's not just a, a strength breaking ratio. It's the diameter of the line and a couple thousandths with a fish underwater can make that difference in real clear water. But I, I, I've used a lot of fluorocarbon and I've only used the best. And this is the best fluorocarbon I have ever used hands down in my life. 
and it will unfortunately it lasts really good on your on your rods and reels you know cody and those guys they fish every day you know they're not like some of the guys that fish on just on the weekends but it's going to last a long time on your rods and reels too it doesn't curl up it doesn't dry out it's just a great line awesome well hey thank you guys for taking us through that i, I you know i know that's something uh there's a lot of buzz both from the product guys the pros and uh, the fishermen, right? The, the weekend warriors. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I'm not sorry about hoarding all that line <laughs> to myself. Uh, that's the new J4. Yeah, Cor Corey will get his. That's the new J Fluoro Samurai fluorocarbon from Daiwa available to buy now on Tackle Warehouse, Corey. Very cool. So I guess I'm going to buy some for myself. So I'm getting on that because I'm going to get out this weekend. So some other products that are new and you can get right now, or actually a few new. We're going to shift gears. This is a Daiwa Yamamoto collaboration, and they've added some new colors to the Neko Fat Worm. And uh, why don't you guys tell us about the Neko Fat Worm? I don't know if Mills, you want to start with this one, or Cody, if you got some, some, some things you want to well, touch on here. Yeah, well, first off, and Cody's got a couple in his hand there, is that we do have a special color for Tackle Warehouse, and it's a 991, and it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a pumpkin blue and black special color for you guys that we only do uh, for Tackle Warehouse on that, oh, wow. on the Nico Fat. Um, and you, you guys can see it up there, what the bait looks like. It's got this cool bulbous tail. Um, you can Nico rig it. Cody, uh, Cody can tell you all the different ways, you know, you can fish it. Um, and then we've got a couple other colors here. Um, we've got this uh, Nico Fat 409. It's kind of a, kind of a pink color on that oh, side. Sorry, wrong one. Uh, and then I believe we got a watermelon red flake. Um, and there's a couple other new ones in there. Um, these are all the Nico Fats. Um, and the Nico Fats, right at, it's, it's right at about five inches on, on that one. So, Cody, have you yeah, had a chance you know, to use the Nico Fats much at all? Or? I have, yes. This is the bait uh, I've been throwing for a while, you know. You know, when you're talking about Nico rigging, it, it's funny, I mean, I've been doing that technique for roughly 15 years, you know, so uh, like the Daiwa Tattoo Elite 7.4 Versal Rod, I designed around that, throwing a wacky rig, a Nico rig, and this is one of the more impressive baits I have ever thrown in my life, and essentially, you know, everyone throws a Yamamoto Cinco, uh, this, is, this is a little bit different, and why is this tail, Mark mentioned, you know, the, the bulbous tail there, well, What's so special about this bait when you're throwing on a Nico rig? You know, you're going to have the weight in the head. Uh, when you pull, pull that bait through the water column, you get a lot of tail action. You know, I, I recommend, I've done this with hundreds of baits, but when you're in the boat, just pull it along and watch how that thing kicks. So when you think about that and you throw it out there and that bait goes down, it's going to spiral down if you're throwing it on the Nico rig. And when you pull it, a lot more tail action. I've noticed a tremendous difference at times of the year, you know, maybe cold water heats up in the afternoon, a lot more bites come on that, um, that bait. So this is a bait I've thrown for a while. Really like it. I, I've seen, um, the, the 409 color. I can say that is clear water spotted bass. It has it written all over it. Really, really cool color. Um, <clears throat> you know, with Yamamoto baits have tons of salt. Uh, they do a fantastic job with pouring colors, but some of these new colors just a must have. And, you know, this isn't only for throwing a Nico rig. You know, I, I throw this on a shaky head, Carolina rig. You can kind of finesse flip this. Um, <clears throat> you could drop shot it. It's a little bigger for a drop shot, but really, I highly recommend the Nico rig. You know, this is something like I've been doing for a long time, but just gets bit. Uh, tougher conditions you know that colder water months really really works but again the tail on this thing guys absolutely incredible if you haven't tried it um you know make sure you do it's a home run for daiwa and uh you know really yamoto and what better way daiwa came up with some of these ideas to have you know arguably the best soft plastic maker in the entire world to make that worm for daiwa so really excited about this and can't wait to get the uh, the TW exclusive color, but I'll tell you the 409 that I have that I've been playing with, and then the you know the, the colors we have in stock right now, really really cool. Yeah, that color we have here on, on the, the the tight camera here, the tight the macro lens. This is that 409 color 
really neat looking color. And that's what I was gonna ask you, you already answered the question. I was like, do you see this for a shaky head or drop starting or other stuff? So you already answered that question for me, so I'm not gonna ask it, but uh, really cool color, a lot of neat stuff. Um, these are available right now for purchase. Let me double check. Yes, you can get them right now on Tack Horse. Make sure to check them out. Really neat looking baits, and this technique's been around for a while now, but the last few years kind of came on a big surge, and it's really getting more and more popular. And it's neat to have Daiwa now doing something, uh, you know, in collaboration with Yamamoto. Two great companies coming together to make an awesome, awesome bait. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of excitement about these baits when they first came out. Uh, you, you know, I mean, everybody knows the bona fides of the Yamamoto Bait Company. Um, and, and, and just a phenomenal plastic, uh, great colors, and then a really cool design here uh, for Nico rigging. Obviously, you could do a ton of other things with this. Uh, I have a technical question for Cody. Uh, Cody, when do you pick up uh, a Nico rig versus, say, a shaky head? You know, so it, my general rule of thumb is a shaky head, I'm always going to throw uh, in more cover, right? So, like, if I'm fishing around, a lot of wood, sticks, rocks, I'm going to throw it in there. Where the, the Nico rig is going to be really more for open water because you're going to use, you know, something like an owner Nico um, sniper finesse hook, something like that. So you're going to, you can get them with the weed guard, but I prefer more open water. There's clear lake rock piles, uh, Nasimeno, stuff like that, Shasta, where the shaky head, if you're in cover, you have to put your bait in the cover. Uh, it, it just seems like it's going to work a lot more because you're going to have that more weedless capability. Awesome. And Corey, you mentioned those are available to buy now. Uh, we do have a bunch of the same colors coming out now in the Nico Macho worm as well, right? That's a, a similar, same series, different design. Yeah, the Nico Macho is uh, by four and a half. Uh, I got both here so you guys can kind of see where it is. So the Nico Macho has a, a little bit more of a bulbous tail. Um, it's a thicker bait. It's a heavy bait, um, if you guys can see it. Um, I don't know where I'm at here on, on, on the camera. Yeah, we've, we've, Versus, we've got a tight angle right here. We're good. Oh, good. Perfect. Excellent. So you got your Nico Fat. You got your right here compared to it. You've got your Nico Macho. Um, and the Nico Macho, like I said, it, it, it's a really heavy bait, um, almost the weight of like an Ica or something like that. And, and, and Cody was right. We have a great relationship with Gary Yamamoto Plastics, Daiwa, are very, we collaborate. We design our own baits in-house. Um, we've got some other stuff we're working on. It'll, so our baits are, are kind of different than them, but they actually use their plastics and their molds to help create it, what, what we're looking for. But this Nico Macho is awesome. Um, you can fish it a bunch of different ways. I'm sure that Cody can tell you. Uh, believe it or not, I actually will use this for spotted bay bass, and I use it up on the Susquehanna River with a lead head in the current, um, swimming it because this bulbous tail just swims differently uh, than anything else. Caught some nice smallmouth doing that uh, with that bait. And like I said, spotted bay bass as well down here in San Diego, Mission Bay and stuff like that. Very cool, yeah. a very versatile yeah. worm. Uh, Cody, is there any way uh, uh, that you would approach the Nico Macho versus uh, the slimmer Nico Fat? Is that the same as that question? For yeah. yeah, so with the Nico Macho, I'll give you a sleeper pick here, what I like, love to do with that. but. Uh, I like throwing it weightless for one, kind of like, you know, we started with the Cinco, um, let it sink. It's got great action on the fall, you know, take it to a pool or, or the water, you know, rig it with like a four rot owner, um, you know, J hook is what I like to throw. Um, I love the Texas rig it real lightweight, you know, maybe down when I was in Florida, I, I love fishing that around some of those beds. Again, you got a lot of tail action, but the sleeper is on a vibrating jig on a chatterbait i'll Ooh. tell you what it i shouldn't even have said that but <laughs> put that thing on a chatterbait and look how hard the tail will kick really really cool for that so you know guys are throwing on a jig head shaky head uh like an oversized ned rig guys are texas rigging it fishing weightless and i love throwing it on a you know something like a jackhammer um evergreen jackhammer there phenomenal bait for that and just something different that fish haven't seen awesome add that to the arsenal of <laughs> non-traditional 
vibrating jig trailers uh, <laughs> that guys guys uh, hold secret. I, did, I know I've got a few that I think are big secrets until I go fish with somebody and they go, oh, I do that. Uh, so really cool, uh, really cool info. We do have a question here from social media for you, specific to the Nico technique. Uh, Cody, Sean asks, what rod setup do you use for Nico, uh, Nico fishing? And, and maybe if you could expand that into reel and line as well. Yeah, so 95% of the time I throw it on a spinning rod. Um, again, I designed a rod for Daiwa. It's the Daiwa Tattoo Elite, seven foot, four inch, versatile rod. Uh, perfect for that. Go check it out on Tackle Warehouse right now. Uh, it's got the AGS guides. Why it's so good, it's got a really soft tip, but a lot of backbone. That's very important for throwing a wacky rig, a Nico rig. Um, it lets those fish load up on that bait. You know, you got a five inch, that Nico, uh, Nico worm, you know, it's a bigger bait. Those fish will load up on that, the tip will, and then you have the backbone to, uh, to get them. So really important, you want a high speed reel. I've fallen in love with the Daiwa Tattoo Tula LT. Um, I personally like the 3000 size has a uh, high gear ratio, really, really good drag. And a must, in my opinion, is braid to floor, uh, braid to a fluorocarbon leader. I love the, the J braid. Um, I love the Grand or the X8. I love the chartreuse color in that X8. And then fluorocarbon's, of course, gonna be J floor or Samurai, anywhere from a six to a 10 pound. So definite, uh, I'll tell you again, I, I mean, I've thrown a, uh, a nail weight, a Nico rig, you know, for 15 years, that rod was really designed around that. And it just happens to make a great tube rod, shaky head rod, but really it was designed specific, you know, specifically for that technique. And it just uh, became a really good versatile rod. So highly recommend that. And uh, again, we talked about the J floral, that stuff, the J braid, excellent braided line, extremely sensitive and uh, really, really high quality. Awesome. Thank you for taking us through that. Uh, again, that is uh, the first one was the Nico Fat mm -hmm. and then the Nico Macho. New colors available to buy now uh, from Daiwa and Yamamoto collaboration. That's that, that's just a really cool union of two cool companies. Definitely. I, I'm excited about the Fat, but I'm really excited. I'm not the most finesse guy. This, this Macho, I see a lot of applications for this and just a neat looking, just a little snack size looking little bait. Uh, before we move on to the next bait, I mean, we've got Cody talking about Yamamoto, and he's talking about some other baits coming up next, some evergreen baits. So, Cody, are you now an official evergreen Yamamoto staffer, or what's going on with that? I am, yes, yes. I'm officially, you know, on with uh, Evergreen International and, uh, you know, Yamamoto Custom Baits. You know, those are two baits. I love, I, I've thrown for years and uh, I mean, Yamamoto, you know, I, I've known Ron Colby there for a long time. It's stuff I've thrown for, you know, 15, 20 years and Evergreen, I absolutely am blown away with the quality of Evergreen. You know, the, the attention to detail, you know, baits in Japan and Evergreen, they're highly tested in those, in those tough conditions over there. And when they come out, you know, you know, it's right, you know, it's going to work. So really excited to uh to be on with both of those companies absolutely and evergreen fans uh stay tuned because cody and i were talking last week i know Corey's in on that conversation uh excited. we're trying to get some really cool japanese evergreen items over here uh available at tackle warehouse i know cody's in on that uh and and, and we've got we've got some big interest and uh, a lot of excitement around that project. So that's something we'll, we'll all be working on in the next Definitely. couple of weeks, hopefully yeah. to bring to you guys uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, so the it's first exciting bait you, times, I'll tell you what. I, I'm really pumped. Like, I, I'm gonna have to really curb my enthusiasm a little bit because there's a lot of stuff that they have over there and we can't bring it all over all at once. But if, I, if it was for me, sure. But to sell it all in here, we're gonna get some cool stuff coming. I'm really excited about it, like Joey said. And the first one you can pick up right now, and you can pick it up for pre-order, is some new colors in the Flat Force 4. You got some of those four? We yep. don't have any samples here, but Cody, do you have some samples? You got them hidden in your truck somewhere? Uh, in I Joey's got some truck, maybe. I got all kinds of samples. Bam! Yes. Yes. So I got some really cool samples here. Again, I apologize. A little bit dark in here. I don't know if they're showing up on the, on the screen. But, We've got, a, uh, we got some pictures up here know, on I'll, the website, so I'm pretty good. 
Okay, perfect. I'll tell you my experiences with the flat force. I'm sure um, I might leave something out. Mark can definitely uh, talk about it as well. But for one, the flat force, you guys, is an unbelievable crankbait. You know, uh, it deflects really, really well. I, I, I'm a guy who I love throwing a square bill. Um, I love throwing a crankbait around non-conventional crankbait areas. You know, maybe a fallen tree, uh, a stump. And I was trying to get to this thing, this thing snagged up uh, last year. Absolutely incredible. It would come over the stuff, deflects off rock structure really well. In fact, last year, uh, major league fishing event, I won one of the rounds on a flat force on uh, Lake of the Ozarks. Really cool. But, you know, this is a bait. It's, it's really like a hybrid combo of a square bill. It doesn't have a square bill. It has a little circuit board lip, uh, but it's not a, a big thick fat bait you know it's more like a, a balsa bait and a square bill combined so you know a couple ways i like to throw this you know if i'm, if I'm fishing real shallow you know in that one two foot range uh I'll, I'll throw it on a 20 pound you know and you could fish it over that stuff again it deflects really well really good colors you know when you have a bait this phenomenal that you could do so many things with it never hurts to have some custom colors and this has been a really go-to for uh, for the guys that have thrown this. Uh, but also, something really cool with the flat force, you could downsize, Brett Height told me this, to a 10, 12-pound test. And this surprisingly thing is going to run, you know, in that four to five-foot range. So, so, you know, you really have one bait that does so much. You know, it deflects really well. You can get it deeper if needed. You can bump up that line. Again, real tight wobble. Uh, just a fish catcher i know that that sounds crazy it just it gets a lot of bites and i was um i was fishing it in wads of bait you know really small little thread pin shad with the cold shad color it's a color that's been out for a while burning it through uh just a, a very impressed and like all evergreen baits which anyone that's thrown them the quality of hooks that come on them um, all the hardware on them they're absolutely phenomenal these are owner hooks on this flat force here and you know what just you're never going to worry with the evergreen that is this bait going to run to the side be out of tune right out of the package but i i was excited to see the original colors and then to see the new ones you know that you guys are going to have it's really really cool so again i believe it's Corey. you could probably probably 10 plus colors that we have now in this bait and uh there's not a bad one you know for for depending on the situation yeah, we've got 12 different colors uh, up there right now. I think we have a few more, uh, the new colors coming out that aren't on there yet, the small mouth and stuff that we don't have pictures for, but there's a small mouth color and a TBA that we should have images up for the site pretty soon that you can pre-order. Just don't have them quite yet, but as soon as we get them up, you guys can get them pre-ordered and get some for yourself. Uh, you might have mentioned it, Cody, maybe I missed it, but uh, I was reading the description of the site and it says that it has that internal tungsten rattle because you know the a flat side of the bait, they don't cast all that well sometimes, but this does have a, a tungsten rattle to be able to chuck it pretty far, right? It does, absolutely. And you know, I'm shaking this bait. It's gonna be silent still. So you're gonna get that balsa feel that gets so many bites, you know, it's gonna be silent. You could cast this really, really well. And you know, it's got that circuit board lip on there. so. You know, one thing with Evergreen, you know, these baits are really, you know, built to last. Um, I have one that I've thrown, I've, I've caught, it seems like hundreds of fish on it, you know, but because the paint's, you know, just starting to really wear off there. But the lip really lasts well. You know, I I would get, go crazy when I'm fishing a square bill, maybe on grass, you get some gunk on it, you slap the bait down and it breaks the lip off. You know, you're not going to do that with this. And what's cool is, you know, I got one of the new colors here, uh, this pre-spawn dynamite. It's, you can see in the bait, it's really translucent in the bait. There's a reflective strip in there. So you just get something different, you know, that you don't necessarily get with other baits. So you have that option, uh, uh, you know, solid colors, you know, little bass colors, um, those real clear water colors, and then some awesome craw patterns. And again, you know, for me, this has really been, and I, and I could see this too, this is my go-to square bill. You know, this is going to be my go-to shallow water crankbait. I, I shouldn't say square bill because it's not a square bill, but my go-to shallow water crankbait that 
It works in cold water. And I've, I've already tested that. It works in the spring. Uh, it works in the fall. I've tested that. It works in the summer. So, you know, there's so many great baits for Evergreen, but this is, you know, probably my favorite right now. And it's really the most that, I, the you know, the one I've thrown the most. So it's easy to have confidence in it. But uh, very, very impressive. Again, the flat force and all those colors, we brought them out for a reason just because they're, this thing catches them and we feel like there's a big need um, for all these colors in the flat force. Some great looking baits. I know she got one in chartreuse and blue. I've got to have to get some of those for myself probably, but I guess I should stop beating that bandwagon. But, uh... <laughs> my sample bill getting higher and higher, Corey. My sample bill keeps going up and up every time you say that. Yeah, exactly. Is there, Mark, did, did Cody get everything right? There's anything else you want to add to this or did Cody nail it all? Uh, he does he does a wonderful job for evergreen and for us and he is right you know you pay for what you get you know um we use good quality hooks good split rings you know that a circuit board bill is going to last from pounding on the rocks it doesn't get chunked up like you would see on a, a plexiglass bill or anything like that so i mean i don't have to tell you evergreen they're, they're, they're not the cheapest baits in the world but you're getting quality and you're getting accuracy every bait out of the box is going to be true i mean it's dead nuts every time some great baits. You can pre-order yours right now if you want to pick some up. Unless, Joey, do you got any questions on the bait at all? Or are you good? Uh, no, just that those are color extensions, Corey. Oh, you sorry, you can colors. already buy that bait here. Yeah, sorry, it's correct. just the new colors that are, uh, that, that yeah. are uh, not quite available yet, but available for pre-order on the site. Yes, sir. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. And the new colors are, I guess we can get the list of the new ones here. I got it here. The new colors are that albino crawl. You can pull up on the site here, Daniel, if you don't mind, or Will. Got the albino crawl's new color. Uh, out, olive crawdad, the pre-spawn dynamite, uh, skeleton pumpkin seed, and the two colors we don't have on the site right now is a small mouth and the TBA. So we'll get those up. As soon as we get those up, you guys can get those pre-orders as well. Some really dynamic looking colors, really neat looking stuff, and some different looking colors too. And they're, they're not just a run of the mill, you know, everyone has this color, so we're going to add it to our lineup too. They kind of have some kind of unique looking versions of some already great colors. Absolutely. Yeah, all great... Go ahead, that Mills. Olive crawdad, guys, that olive crawdad, mm, that's a pretty solid color right there, boys and girls. No doubt. Absolutely. No, some, some great colors uh, from, from Evergreen adding to their already great crankbait lineup. Uh, excited to see more from them in the future. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, some different, different kind of colors there, not your standard stuff. Uh, looking out of the box to show the fish a different look. Speaking of showing the fish a different look, we have something really <laughs> different here. Uh, I know this is something that the sales staff at Dio was, was really excited about. They just, uh, you know, it's it's definitely a little different bug. This is the new Gizmo, and and I don't even know what to think about this thing. Uh, Mills, can you tell us what is the Gizmo and why do we need it? I, I can actually, believe it or not, I was the first person to test one and I actually got bit on it right away and broke it off. The only sample we got and I broke it off at the lake by my house. I was super bummed. It was a tough decision or a tough discussion to tell everybody in the office that I went down, tested it, got blown up on and broke it off uh, the year before last when we were playing with these. So the gizmo uh, right there, um, there's a couple of different colors I think you're looking in, uh, somewhere of around nine colors if I'm not mistaken. Um, right there, some different colors, it's kind of a brown. Um, no, it's not the murder hornet, but it looks kind of like one. Um, <laughs> what it is, it's, it's, it's an elastic type bait. So you can see it, it's a soft plastic oh, yeah. and it stretches, you know, it's got a special hook in it. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, a little, little kind of the legs that come out of it as well. Special hook um, and a little weed guard. And what's cool is if you, if you go on to any of the Japanese sites, the way they fish this, um, you kind of fish it over and on top of weeds or trees or underneath logs. Um, and it's, it is a surface bait, but you don't, it's not a pop bait. So it's not a splash, splash. You kind of just take it and vibrate it on top of the water. Um, like I said, I went down to the lake over here, made a couple of casts and had a five counter pump up, blew up on it and I broke it off. And I was like, oh man. Um, but it's a very neat bait to fish. We got a special rod that we'll talk about with it to fish it properly. Is it a tournament bait? Probably not. But if anybody that's a pond ninja or wants to go down to your golf pond or just wants to have fun and skip it up underneath the trees and stuff, 
Um, it's a very cool bait. You can actually climb it over the top of uh, trees and stuff. Um, it's just a neat bait to fish. It kind of tells you where we're going with um, evergreen and the direction. We're looking outside the box for outside the box techniques and fishermen. And that's one of those baits. It's been in Japan for a while. It took us a long time to bring it over. Like I said, a year and a half ago, I was fishing it out here. Um, and it's a cool bait to fish. It does get bit. Um, and it, it does become into a multi-species. You can catch big panfish on it, trout on it, and bass fish on it. Like I said, I had a big bass blow up. I actually it was so big that I got to take a picture of the big roll on it and show everybody that I lost the only bait that we had. So, um, but great, great bait. Sounds like Mark Mills Mark, problems I'm to a, me. <laughs> yeah, it's standard. It does. I, <laughs> I was thinking that. You notice how he said a five pounder when he never actually truly saw the fish. No, I'm dude, I, did, I saw a big mouth. I've caught enough bass, dude. It was a big fish, right? It was a good one. Hey, I will, I, I will disagree just a tad on this bait. I do think there's going to be one application specifically that you're going to, you're going to really want this gizmo. And that is uh, on a bug hatch, you know, a mayfly hatch. I'll, I'll tell you where I would have killed to have this bait. And, and you notice with this bait, um, all the detail, but you notice Mark mentioned the, um, the material it's made out of. Well, I just noticed from touching, you know, and moving around, I, I was looking at YouTube on uh, the JDM Evergreen site. And I noticed, and, and we've all seen this, when a dragonfly, a mayhatch, it hits the water and they're trying to shake their wings. They really did a good job uh bottling this that up in this bait because those little wings when you twitch it i mean it really quivers and puts off little small wake um on the surface that that i think is deadly and, and i'll tell you a situation years ago on lake st Clair, there was mayflies everywhere and these fish were nearly impossible to get to bite and the only way you can get them to bite is as soon as they came up and ate a mayfly you had to have your bait hit there within maybe two seconds and you might catch that fish. I could see in a situation like that, a tournament situation, this is gonna be absolutely deadly. Uh, we, we see those mayfly hatches all over the place, all over the country, something like that, where you can really match the hatch. Um, you're gonna do this. Mark, I know you mentioned a rod. I, I personally think, I haven't thrown this bait, but I can personally think to myself, it's gonna be a six, eight, maybe four pound test bait something you can really cast this thing because this is a real light wire hook so uh you're you're gonna need that to skin hook some of these fish but i could see a situation like i said guys uh rivers the chickamauga when they're so dialed into those mayflies uh or whatever the hatch might be the gizmo would be something very handy to have in your back pocket to uh to throw out there because those fish when they're on mayflies, they, they feed only on mayflies a lot of times and they're so dialed. That's what I'll personally be throwing out of. Good call, thanks. Appreciate that one. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bank on a, a Cody Meyer uh, <laughs> mayfly hatch win in 2021. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I know that, that would make for great TV. So, so we'll hope that happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that again, guys, is the gizmo. Uh, it's available to buy now. Tackle Warehouse, Corey. If you get on that bite, maybe give us a heads up a little ahead of time so we can make sure we got plenty in stock because these guys could sell pretty quick <laughs> if you get something that crazy. But I, I see it happening. It's definitely an option. So you mentioned... I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Cody. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I was going to say the, the rod, Mark is going to have a rod, I think, but yeah. the, the rod that comes to mind for me is going to be um, the Daiwa Tattoo Elite 7.6, uh, Nico hair jig rod designed by Seth Fighter. That's something I can, I feel like you can cast this bait pretty well, but I'm intrigued to hear what Mill says too, because it, it is a lighter bait and it'll be hard to cast it, you know, so you're gonna, you're gonna need that, that right rod with that right tip that you can really whip that bait out there. That's the rod that comes into mind for me, but um, I'd like to hear, hear what Mark says for sure. Yeah, so that rod that he's referring to is it's it's a it's an evergreen combat stick gizmo special, which we have for pre-order right oh. now. But if Mark, if you could tell us a little bit about that rod, because I haven't had a chance to handle that one quite yet. What is the deal with that yeah, rod? This is pretty neat, actually. We're thinking, so it's a so granted you're gonna need a spinning rod and you're gonna fish lighter line, you know, somewhere around six pound test, depending on where you're at. If you're throwing it in the 
the bushes or trees, you know, that six, seven, or eight pound you can get away with if you need to, but the six is probably going to be the sweet spot for that. But what makes it special is one, it's 610, but the really thing is that we use the Daiwa Mega Top. And uh, we've done this on, on some of our rods. Uh, Steve's used them in the past. We got some new rods that we have out uh, that we use, this, and it's a it's an actual solid tip. So I don't know if you guys can see this here, and it's tough to do it, but the tip, see how, see how the tip really, it's very thin in through here, but really shuts down. And the rod's got a ton of power. So if you see where it shuts, I'm trying to show that. So you've got this area here, you got a real soft tip to whip that lure, you know, keep that bait to where it needs to go, you know? And then it has a lot of backbone in order to pull that fish or lift it from any of the bushes or trees. So it's the evergreen rod, it's got a mega top on it, and uh, it's 610. Um, like I said, it's it's the perfect rod designed to cast, uh, and Brent Height worked on this as well, designed to cast the, it'll work for other things, but it's made for that gizmo. It's designed to cast that bait as far as possible, but still give you enough power in order to lift it out of the bushes or trees or any of the cover. So. Uh, it's a great rod. It's designed for this, and it's kind of part of all of our system. You know, where you got the rod, you got the reel, you got the line, and you got the lure. Everything is made perfect for this particular bait and this type of fishing um, on that. Yeah, I can see that rod, like I said, for any kind of fin fin finesse technique, sorry, where you're getting under, like, under a boat dock or in the bush, uh, shaky head, neko, something like that, where you really need some power to really kind of pull them out of there. So it'd be a cool rod for that. Obviously, a great rod designed here for the gizmo, but a, a, a no, you neat want looking rod. The air, and you need that real soft tip, but that real soft tip on any rods that have that real soft tip, it tends to become almost like a gumball where you can just bend through it. This one's quick and fast, but look at all it just shuts down. It just shuts down right there. Yeah, you know, yeah. that, that Daiwa Mega Top uh, was, was really interesting when it first came out, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, yeah. May have found the perfect application here in the Daiwa Gizmo, or Evergreen Gizmo yeah. rod, Corey. I think 10 or 12 years ago, Daiwa was ahead of their time. They didn't know how to uh, really capture and grab where that actual technique, or not a key technique, but that feature on that rod would work. And we figured out, and we're placing it in specific techniques and, and, and baits that we're designing for that kind of stuff. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. And that uh, the Gizmo Special Rod is available for pre-order on the site right now. Uh, we do have another evergreen uh, rod here. Mark, if you could tell yeah. us about the Combat Stick. Uh, this is in addition to uh, the Combat Stick line from Evergreen. Uh, this is yep. a seven two. Let us know what's yeah, going on here. huh? MH, Brent Height designed that for one specific bait as well. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it right now. It's for the shower blows. It is a shower blows bait. It's designed to cast it, fish it better than any rod that you can ask. So that's what that bait has been designed for. He made it for strictly throwing that top water bait. And, and when you make a rod like that, there's lots of rods that you can buy that, oh, this thing will work good on it. This is the best rod to throw that bait. It loads properly, it fires properly, and it allows the bait to be fished properly. The best that you could do. That's really cool. And, and you know, something uh, coming from Brett Height, Corey, uh, somebody who, who really has mastered that, that, that top water bait, uh, anybody who's thrown that shower blows, uh, the, the SB they're calling it in the US knows that they can hook that thing uh, as far as any bait I've ever fished. Uh, so for schooling fish, uh, you, you pair that, that Evergreen SB uh, with, with the new Brett Height 7.2 and, and you're gonna be able to reach those, those schooling fish across the lake it seems like sometimes you throw all the line out of your reel. Uh, so that's a that's a really cool addition from Evergreen in the Combat Stick, uh, and that's available to buy now on Tackle Warehouse. Give me one sec, guys. I was trying to get back into. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm, let me fix the zoom here, Carl. Yeah, yeah, no thing. problem. Uh, hey, it wouldn't be a live show without <laughs> some tef technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, while uh, while Corey's getting that worked out, guys, uh, we are going to transition to a. a, a some other Daiwa rods here, uh, the DX swim bait rods. And, and before we have you guys show us that stuff, uh, it, you know, this has been a, a very uh, solid 
series of rods for a long time. Um, I'd say maybe five or six years, uh, the Daiwa DX Swim uh, rod series has been out and, um, and, and just a great price point and a great following. Uh, hopefully we can get uh, Millsy and, and, and Cody here uh, to talk about these rods. Uh, but you know, for, for, for a burgeoning um, swim bait fisherman, this is just a phenomenal rod uh, to get into here. Um, so re really looking forward to hearing what they have. It's a it's a no no frills uh, rod here. It's a you know uh, cork butt cork foregrip. Uh, nothing um, nothing fancy. Like I said, no frills. This is a this is a rod that's uh, designed to do the job uh, uh, of throwing a big swim bait or an Alabama rig and, and and do it well and do it for for the best possible price. Um, so uh, yeah, looking forward to, to hearing what the guys have have to say on that. We talked earlier about the uh, Tatula 300, Corey. Uh, I'm sure that would pair up beautifully with these uh, DX rods. Um, hey, how you how you doing on looks the rest like, of the party? It looks like we got Cody and them back. We got. I'm back. So have you had a chance to yes. fish, a chance to fish with the DX rods at all, Cody, or swimmate rods specifically? I, I had. I have, yes. Yeah. So I know there's some new models. Uh, I, I don't know the exact models, but I believe there's, you know, medium heavy, um, an extra heavy. I've personally thrown the extra heavy, really good price point on these rods. Uh, you know, that was the rod I was using for my really big, um, you know, big swim baits like a Huddleston or, you know, something like that, a huge big glide bait, you know, that I throw with the, uh, the die with tattoo, the 300. And I'll tell you what, when you, when you have a swim bait rod, um, it, you don't want to spend just tons of money. In, in my opinion, you know, you, it, the, the rods are sensitive enough. Um, they're, they're perfect, you know, actions and, and what it's, you know, mostly for there, what the hardest thing is, or I should say is getting a rod that can throw that big bait. So, you know, these are, these are perfectly designed for those huge baits. Um, again, I know there's multiple models of that, but um, I like the cork on there. Uh, I, like I say, I've thrown it for those really big baits, cast them really well, loads up really well. And another important feature, in my opinion, is having that longer handle. You know, you're throwing that big swim bait. You don't want to be really using your wrist a whole lot. You're going to use your whole body to throw that so you can, you can have that handle uh, to help you cast. And same with setting the hook. And it's really designed for, like I say, those big stuff. Pairing up with that big reel, uh, I could see a guy in Southern California walking big ponds, uh, up you know to a tournament guy like me, Lake Shasta, uh, going back east, throwing those big swim baits, trying to get those big bites, and not spending a fortune on the rod and reel to do it. Sure, sure. You know, uh, Cody, you mentioned it. Uh, the the biggest feature you need in a swim bait rod is just something that's going to allow you to work the rod and not or work the bait and not uh let the bait work you and and uh you said you'd gotten to play with the extra heavy i mean that that's a serious rod that's gonna you know let you handle four to six ounce baits uh and and cast and work those effectively really all day if you need to uh you know this isn't uh this isn't a beefed up flipping stick this is a swim bait rod in its own right. And for, for, you know, a hundred bucks, man, what a deal. What a deal. You know, I, I remember years ago when swim baits, a rigs were really getting popular. Guys are spending a ton of money. There's just no need. I mean, this rod does everything you need. Very good price point. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I fish for a living tour across the country like I say, I'm in my truck right now. I still have 2,000 miles to go, but that's the rod I go to for throwing a big swim bait. And it's comfortable. Like Joe, you mentioned, you can, you can properly throw that bait all day. Not going to wear you down. Got the handle so you can really make the right cast using your body. You can put that handle underneath your arm, load into those fish. You have the right action to catch those fish, to land those fish, but in my opinion, throw that bait properly. And that's the biggest deal. So really, I, I have fished those rods for, um, you know, we've had them for, I don't know, but it seems like three or four years at least and uh, very impressed with those rods so far. 
Sure, just a refresh on the auctions there. Uh, and the DX rods are available to buy now uh, on Tackle Warehouse. Sure, we had some technical problems. We got Mark back on now. Mark, I don't know if you caught all that. We kind of went through some of the rods. Anything you want to add to the DX rods at all, the swim bait rod or a, the, at all? We got you there, Mark? Uh, speaker view. What happened to Mark? We lose Mark again. We somehow, Mark left us again. Well, we didn't want to hear what Mark had to say anyway. Uh, well, uh, we, we got Cody here. So, uh, you know, Cody looks like up next, we got the Tatula casting rods. They, they added some new models. Uh, this isn't your signature Tatula Elite rods. Uh, but this is just the regular old Tatula uh, casting rod. Uh, really uh, pretty simple and beautiful finish here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these? Yeah, you know, so it's the same great features that we had on the Tatulas before. You know, that, that's the rod when I came to Daiwa. You know, of course, I, I oh, man, I want Steez. I want this. I want that. And I, and I used some Zillions, used the Steez, but really got familiar with the whole tattoo lineup. And one thing about the whole lineup with Daiwa, uh, it, it just the actions, you know, I I can't express enough how I love the Daiwa has done this and really with the, the tattoo elite lineup, but they asked for our input to make a great rod all across the board from the lowest end to the highest end. And one thing with the tattoo is the actions are, are approved by us. Um, they have basically every rod that you need. Um, and the new look of the Tatula is very JDM to me. It really looks good. You know, I like those looks of those rods. Oh, sorry, you might have lost Cody there. I was switching rooms. Uh, well, Mills, why were I get, why get Cody back? Or, we got Cody back now. Okay. Yeah, I got back. There? There. We're good. Yeah, yeah. they're 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 very sensitive. I think I, I left off there very sensitive. Uh, and just the, the actions are right, you know, and it really depends when you're buying a rod, you know, it's what you're looking for. There's, we have a, a huge price point difference in all the rods and really, in my opinion, there's a rod for everybody. If you're a, a, a guy who's walking the bank um, on a budget, you're a guy that's extreme high end. You want, you know, all the way up through Steez to Tattoo Elite. We have every rod really and, and the the new tattoo it's it's been really cool to see the whole lineup uh really change you know not change but the new models come around and i know you know these new models now mark's going to uh, dive into the, the exact actions but um you know i fished them in the past really really uh, a joy to fish and, and a good rod right right yeah. yeah hey mark it sounds like yeah. uh if, if we got you there uh a That's new right. seven three heavy swim bait and seven nine heavy swim bait in the yeah. in the daiwa tatula line the rod, bass rods yeah so those actually match up absolutely perfect with the new uh tatula 300 i don't know if you guys talk about it but they match perfectly for that and uh the seven three um has a has a large real slate on it but that seven nine even has a little bit bigger real seat it's got a little bit more of a um a finger area in there to, to hold on a little bit better and it's got a little bit longer rear grip so it allows you on that that seven nine to really make a little bit bigger cast with those heavier baits so um both of those like i said they they, they match up perfectly for our tatula 300 that's kind of why we we put them in the lineup Very cool. you know i just mentioning that that seven nine I haven't personally fished a rod, but it sounds like to me too, you know, I love the seven nine in the Daiwa Tattoo Elite for throwing swim baits, um, A rigs and long casting frogs. That's what Ish made it for. This could be a rod to do similar things. You know, maybe A rig, you said big swim baits, Mark. Yeah. Um, throwing, throwing a frog on those big, long, huge mats, Lake Gunnersville, stuff like that. Sounds like that's another rod you know, that you could use that just depending on if you want the Tatula or the Tatula Elite. Uh, you know, I, I know the action's going to be right on. on yeah, and like tattoo, I said, the, sure. the handle grips are where it really changes a little bit. So uh, we do a different grip on it. We're using a Fuji Real Seat, and we use a little bit bigger Fuji Real Seat on the, the, the 7 9 than we do the 7 3. That's just so it, it fits in your hand a little bit better and allows you that to really throw a little bit heavier bait. I know they're both, I believe, heavies. But that, that 7.9 is like a heavy, heavy, not quite an extra heavy, but it's like a heavy, heavy. 
So there's a little bit of difference in that. Very nice. And, and like you said, pairs up beautifully with the new Tatula uh, 300. Uh, I think that's going to be a winner. Beautiful rods in the new Tatula uh, casting series there. Yep. And those rods are available right now for purchase, right? You can buy them right now uh, yeah. and get them for yourselves. Uh, what do we got next, Joey? Well, uh, you know, it looks like we might uh, might be bringing a new a new buddy to the party. I oh, already got that because we got the tattoo done. Okay, so ten four. Uh, so I'm a little yeah. off. I was trying to get all this stuff going. So uh, we're gonna kick Cody out for a little bit here, and then we're going to bring in someone else. So Cody, stick around. Don't leave. We want to bring you at the end of the show so we can. Uh, sure have you talk about some other stuff, but we're going to bring in our boy Brent Ayler and hopefully get him going on, see if we can get it going here in the live room. And What's up, fellas? Hey, we got you there, buddy. How's it going? It's going well. I can't complain. All right. Good to see all your mugs right now. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I, I was going to mention it, and you've actually got the background. You know, in this offseason, it looks like you've been doing a lot of mountain biking and riding, it looks like, huh? Oh man, I'm I'm fully obsessed. It's so funny. It's it's unreal. I've been riding every day. Well, next time you come down and bring the bike, there's a ton of awesome trails around here. A lot of the guys here ride pretty hard, pretty heavy, and they can take you out and kind of show you around. It's really cool. Uh, like I said, great trails and great mountain biking around here. That's oh cool. man, I'd love to. I know I talked to Bud about it. I know he rides a ton, so I, I need to come out there and ride with you guys and, and hang out. And we, we need a barbecue. I want to I want to tackle warehouse Traeger cookout. We need, to do, we need to have all the Daiwa and Tacwa's guys come down and do one big old barbecue meet up. Maybe, maybe we'll meet up like at Clear Lake or something like that. I'll get together and hang out there and do a little fishing and, and, uh, and whatnot. Corey, hey, you, know what, you yeah. know what I know uh, Brent got on uh, a couple of years ago was a little combo ski and fish trip. Uh, that's what I need to get on. <laughs> I, I'm ready for some cold water or cold weather. It's been hot here. Uh, a little, oh, a little, little combo fish and, and ski sounds great. I'd be I'm, down for I'm that. I'm with you on that too. Absolutely. Well, uh, hey Brent, it, uh, you know, love to talk mountain bikes and and uh, and skiing with you, but <laughs> that's not what we're here for. Uh, we're here to talk fishing and new products from Daiwa. Uh, up first, yeah. we got the Laguna LT spinning reel. Uh, available to buy now. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, the, the neat thing about that reel, I mean, not just the price point. I mean, shoot, it, it Mark, what are they, $40 retail? 39 to 49 bucks, you know, yeah. right in that price point range. So, so one thing about Daiwa that uh, maybe a lot of people don't know, but they've been around for a long time. The spinning reels have been around for a long time. I have used the spinning reels since the day I could cast a spinning reel. I want to say at about 13, I got my first Whisker 1300, uh, which is now the tournament series. Is that correct, Mark? Mm, I think so, if I'm not mistaken. It's, a little, it's been a while. It's, it's the old gold spool, black reel. The Whisker 1300 is what we used to call it. And that reel was one of the best spinning reels that I'd ever put in my hand, you know, at that time. And since then, Daiwa has come out with so many other reels that are so good. I mean, the, the Souls, the Fuegos, out to the Tatula LTs now, the Stees, the Exist. We have the best spinning reels on the market, period. The neat thing about this reel is you get it at a better price point. But what I like about it is you get the drag. That's the one thing that the Daiwa spinning reels are so good at is the drag. In a spinning setup, that is your friend. On the bait casting reels, I crank that thing as far forward until it stops and I never loosen it. Spinning, you have to have drag. And by far, Daiwa has the best drag on the market to help you set the hook on fish, fight fish, and not have them break your light line. So you're getting that package in a $39 to $49 reel and that's what they've done with, uh, with the Laguna. Yeah, you know, we can't, we, you know, we can't build all $700 reels. We have to find that price point. Not everybody has that type of funds. Not everybody's into it. But like, like Brent was selling, this is the ability that, hey, 
I'm getting into my first one or some people just, Hey, this is a great reel. I don't want to spend, you know, 50 or hundred bucks on a reel. I spend 39 bucks and I've got seven of them. You know, I, I yeah. see that in Tennessee and Kentucky at some of the shows, the guys, they can afford it. They're like, nah, I like my $49 reel. I'm, I'm good. I want six of them. And every year they just get new ones. So, but it's really smooth. It's, it's a great reel. We've kind of changed. The Laguna was always that kind of white look. It didn't kind of fit the mold. So we went to a good traditional silver, a little bit of gold, just a, a great looking reel. From a 1,000, we've got a 2,000, a 2,500, 3,000, and a 4,000. And I believe we also even do a 5,000 in that. So um, it's kind of the full meal deal with this, this, this reel right here. Great reel, great price, uh, available to buy now on the site. Uh, definitely just, you know, a, a further extension. Uh, Cody, or I'm sorry, Brent was talking about that. Uh, just, just the long legacy of excellence in spinning reels from Daiwa continues at a great price uh, and a really sharp looking reel too. Yeah, clean looking. I, I like that. That little hint of blue with that gold. It's very, a very sharp, clean looking lines, and it, it feels like a solid reel. I mean, I would not think forty nine dollars picking this guy up and just playing with it. It actually, it actually reminds me. The looks of it looks like the uh, older Steez. Yeah, it kind of does, yeah. Kind of like I said, we, we do a lot of, we take the top and bring it down, um, you know, especially for 39, 49 bucks. There's a lot of high school kids. High school, we stay really involved in the high school market. We were just at the Florida event last weekend. And not all these kids, you know, rely on their parents to buy them tackle. They save their money up. And this is a great reel they're going to be happy with. It's going to last for them and it's going to feel like a $100 reel. And you know what I like about that? When, when I started fishing, I, I mean, I had one spinning reel and that was it and i believe the the price point is pretty similar today on that whisker 1300 model as it was back then so think about you know 30 years ago i paid almost a hundred dollars for that reel i wasn't going to buy a second one you know that was that was the reel i bought i couldn't do it you know all the mowing lawns and and sweeping up around the yard you know at 13 <laughs> you know there's only so much you can do and uh with a you know forty dollar reel, I could have two of them. I could have two for different situations. You know, I was walking the bank and I'd carry two or three rods with me. I'd carry a bait caster and a spinning reel. Now I could carry you know two of those. You know, at that age, I mean, I was throwing a spinning reel more than anything. Yeah, that's an arsenal. You're at that age, right? That's an arsenal. You got two. I can go do whatever yeah. I want. I yeah, see it every exactly. day down here. Absolutely. Go check it out. Available to buy now. Uh, Corey, we got another reel coming up too, right? Another reel. I, I think this is one that you're probably really excited about. I know myself, I'm excited about it. It's the Tatula CT casting reel. Uh, they've been really stepping up the Tatula line and keep adding more and more reels so you can really get everything you need within that Tatula line. Quality, quality reels. Great price. And that CT, that makes a big difference. A lot of the reels, as you know. So tell us a little about the reel and what's going on with this one, uh, Brent. You know, I, uh, I, I really like this reel. This is one of the reels I used full time, you know, a little while ago until the, some of the different models came out. Uh, I still use the Tatula CT right now when I'm cranking. I use the five gear ratio uh, for throwing a big deep diving plug. I just want that little bit slower handle turn. So even right now I run three or four of them, uh, you know, during a season. Um, but I like the cosmetics of this. That's the biggest difference that they've done uh, with the new CT. It basically got a facelift, you know, it got, much it. They, they got some of that PP money in there. Things were looking good. Let's just kind of upgrade some things. Let's, you know. <laughs> it got that facelift. <laughs> so it looks sexy. I love that thing. And uh, it's going to look good when I'm winding that plug around. Yeah. Like, like Fred said, you know, all we really did with this reel, we didn't do anything internally, externally, other than we gave it a facelift. We, we kind of changed it from, Kind of, it was kind of, I would say, a gaudy red down to a, you know, a deep, pretty blue, which kind of ties, not gaudy. And then we've added some rubber paddle knobs. We changed the handle knobs to make them a little bit more comfortable. But that's about it. We don't have the the, the DVEC handle knobs like we did, where you would feel that once in a while on your hands. Yeah. We just smoothed them out. But uh, all in all, you know, you can show them. It, it's a good looking reel. And uh, Brett knows this as well. We got the Tatula on the side, the the spider. So it's got. I it's love that spider. thing, man. That thing's so rad, like that. Look at that. <laughs> the Tatula tattoo. That looks really good in the camera too, man. You did a good job there. <laughs> but um, you know, this is the our our first reel in our lineup where we can actually put the T wing in. 
And, you know, explain them a little bit about that T-Way and what that benefit is, Brent, so they got to hey. understand that. You know, this thing right here has probably revolutionized, you know, at least in our brand, because this is, you know, what, this is our technology. I say our Daiwa. This is not something that other people can copy. If you think, of, if you look at a, a, a level wind right here, that's where your line is going through when you cast, okay? So on a normal reel, if you cast, your line has to funnel through that right there, okay? Well, what that does is it creates more friction, okay? So there's more friction for your line to jump off the spool and go through that tiny little level wind. When that happens, you're gonna have a problem with that line be like filing through that little opening and it's gonna back up, which is gonna give you a backlash right here. So what they have done is they have done the T-wing system. So if I click on the thumb bar, the level wind here now becomes that much bigger you increase the surface area which is going to open that thing up let that line travel through the level wind and have fewer backlashes and cast farther just that one thing alone is going to take this reel and make it cast farther and have fewer backlashes just by doing that when you click it in gear now it goes to the standard normal level wind that when i wind that thing it winds that line evenly across the spool when i go to cast there goes my extra casting distance and fewer backlashes. And that's what the T-Wing system does. Excellent. Very cool. You know, there's, there, there's so many different types of uh, it, it, new technology that come out on, on casting reels and, and is touted as the next big thing. That was a great and practical fishing side view uh, yes. that, that, that Ayler just gave us of, of exactly what that T-Wing does and practically how it's gonna help your fishing. Uh, that's really cool. Thank you for taking us through that. Yeah, that, that thing right there has single-handedly changed, you know, our reels at Daiwa. You can put different knobs on it. You can put different cranks on it. You can add a bearing here and there, but that right there, that one single thing makes you cast farther and have fewer backlashes. Very cool. Uh, well, that's the new Tatula CT casting reel. Uh, and uh, folks at home, keep a lookout because we've got a screaming deal coming uh, on the old ones this holiday season. So good to know. Watch out for that. Uh, anyway, uh, looks like rolling right into some tackle storage. Uh, there's a new yep. tackle barn. You guys got that there? Or can, can you tell us a little I bit do about actually. it? It's right here. I got it right here. And they actually start shipping this month. Um, this is something that's very unique and very cool. Um, um, and we call it the tackle barn because it actually kind of shaped like a barn. Um, what's cool about it is that, um, hopefully you guys can see this here, it's tough where I'm at, but you lift the top up and there's your storage system right there. And it comes with four, one on each side, because this, this opens up kind of like the gull wings of a Lamborghini. So you have on this side, I don't have boxes in this one, but on this side, just like that, it comes with four 37 or 370 boxes and four 3600 or 360 boxes two and two and two and two um besides that we pull this all up it actually is nice because it kind of fits underneath the console of your boat you've got right here you got an area to put your sunglasses you've got an area here to put stuff in this area uh, extra tackle there is a actual a rain cover that goes over the top of it in case it starts pouring on you that'll keep it dry you got another little area here that you can actually put stuff inside here that's kind of a waterproof section. And then another area, let me open this up too, it's kind of cool, that has area for more sunglasses, your cell phone, and you got an area that you can put your, your leader wheel on there as well. But very cool box, comes in at about $199. Um, it's got a strap, um, holds a ton of tackle, and it looks really cool and it's very practical to use. Mills, I think yeah. only you could compare a tackle box that looks like a barn to a Lamborghini. So kudos on that sales pitch. Uh, but hey, I mean, lots of, lots of thought into it. 
and, and I, I guess maybe it is the Lamborghini of tackle boxes. Uh, it, looks it, like something that you know Corey would try to bring into my boat. Uh, I would say it's a per I said, to <laughs> me it's a perfect coangler bag, right? Right, right. I mean, he's got to he's got to bring the whole garage when he comes. Uh, but it, for so many of us, that's so important. Um, to, to make sure that you've got everything you need uh, for your trip on the water and, and a beautiful new uh, uh, piece from, from Daiwa here, the uh, Tackle Barn to carry all yeah. of the stuff you need available for pre-order on the site. Yeah, and, and if you're a non-boater, you know, you got to carry all your stuff. You know, I've been bond boaters and stuff and you throw it up underneath the console. The problem with most tackle boxes is that they're frontward, you have to get out of the front. So now you got to pull it out to dig into it. This one you can do right here underneath your feet. So, um, and actually on the flip side too, if you're a saltwater guy, it's great for a saltwater boat too. You know, I like the fact that you have the separated compartments on, you know, one on each side of the barn. Mm -hmm. You can have your hard baits on one side, you can have your soft baits on the other, however you want to organize it. I fished as a co-angler for a couple of years. I know what it's like. I'm taking a tackle bag. I hate having your boxes stacked like this because inherently you always need that box that's on the bottom. And when you're in a hurry, you're throwing boxes everywhere to get to that one. You stand up to go to cast and you have boxes everywhere still. Yeah. I went through that route. I did that. And I can see how effective this is. It's going to be great for saltwater, like you said, Mark. I and mean, that thing is a great throw on the boat, go out, chase tuna. You could have irons or whatever on one side. You got poppers in the other. You, you can you distribute things all across that thing. And I like the waterproof canvas over it that's that's a big deal i can't tell you how bad it is to come back at the end of the day take all the stuff into your hotel room open up all your boxes to air everything out because it rained all day that thing just it sounds like it has everything to it yeah and you know i know you're with lure lock and just to let you guys know so it comes with four and four right but you can fit another uh box in front here so you can actually fit like eight and eight it'll hold a lot more than what we have in there so if you do have your lure lock boxes, you can put those inside it as well. It holds a ton of tackle. You know, to hit our price point, we could put four thirty-seven hundred and four thirty-six hundred, but you can actually do a lot more than that in this. There is room to do that. So there it Perfect. is, the tackle barn, pretty awesome by Dial. It's amazing. You heard it, Joey. Ailer mentioned this would be a great co-angler bag. So. He's green lighting it for making the coiner bag. Next time we go fishing, or Brent, next time I go with you, you might have just uh, burned yourself off to bring it on the boat, all, all their camera gear we bring along. But really cool bag, fits everything you need, and I'm sure you'd be okay with this coiner to bring it on your boat. Hey, as long as there's a, a sandwich in there for me, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a sandwich. Right. okay easy enough yeah absolutely well hey brent uh stick around for for a minute uh we're we're bringing another friend here uh in a second and then uh, we'll bring you back for the finale in just a just a few minutes here so up next we're going to bring our boy jared lintner on to the show jared's going to hang it out wait for us this whole time to talk about some stuff let's see if we can get jared coming in here jared we got you buddy you can see him you i'm see here him? Nice. What's up, Millsy? Not much, hey. man. How are you, bud? You I'm doing good. well. I'm doing well. Just just started the trek, uh, doing the same thing as Cody and uh, traveling to a tournament. And um, yeah, uh, got my new truck locked and loaded and going to pick up my new boat after the tournament. So life's good. Um, got the got to see the new reels. I'm very, very impressed. I played with it. You know, when you're driving a thousand miles a day, you, you Got to keep busy. I'm, you know, winding that's the That's not like handle. talking and texting, right? You can play with reels. That's legal. Yeah, that's legal. I mean, okay, that's... Good. That's what I think. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, Plans these new reels. trucks pretty much dry themselves anyway. But, uh, <laughs> you know, before we get started on the uh, the spinning reel, the Procyon, the one thing I can say, you know, I've used a lot of reels over my career, and with this T-wing design in, in the bait casters Daiwa has, I've noticed... Actually, a partner of mine uh, that I fished with Clear Lake this last weekend, um, we were both throwing the same uh, style rattling bait, and he's like, dude, how are you throwing it that much further? We're throwing pretty much the same rods, same line. I'm like, I, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm stronger. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, no, it was because of the T-wing, because he picked up my rod, and he flung it out there. He's like, holy smokes, dude. I I I've never thrown a reel like that, that, I mean, like I said, same line, same bait, pretty much same rod. And it's going, 
I'd say 20 to 30, 40 feet further. Um, I know that Joey's actually fished a lot of Daiwa reels with that T-wing, and I, I think he's had the same results. So very, very impressive. And, and, you know, super smooth, and the drag's awesome, everything like that. But uh, I can't wait to put this little CT, you know, here in a little bit. We're going to go fish a little bit deeper, you know, some finesse jigs and maybe a, you know, a, a smaller swim bait and stuff like that, which is what I'm going to do with that, the Tatula CT. So uh, can't wait to give that a try. Now, hey, uh, so I was saying, Littner, you mentioned fishing Clear Lake. You and Joey just got back from Clear Lake. You literally drove up last night. You guys had a pretty good finish. How, where were you got, what was the tournament for? Was the TOC correct? And how'd you do? Yeah, it was American Bass. Um, uh, a really good friend of ours, Randy McAbee, and his son actually won it. We ended up in ninth. Um, we just never boated a big fish. Uh, that's the thing with Clear Lake. You know, you you need to get those extra big big bites, and you need to get them in the boat. We didn't lose any. Uh, we just we had a couple opportunities, but they didn't get the bait. It wasn't our turn to win. Um, but that's Clear Lake, man. That's what keeps me going back after all these years. Is it's my favorite lake in the country. Um, there's so many different ways to catch them, but you know, what's kind of weird about that place is guys are catching them on drop shots, jigs, swim baits, crank baits, rattle traps, spinner baits, chatter baits, everything, every Carolina rigs, it doesn't matter, but there's always one little key thing that somebody figures out and ends up winning the tournament. And that's what Randy McAbee and his son did. And, uh, my hat's off to him, man. You know, I've, uh, I've been on the winning side of things where you feel like you got it dialed in and nobody else is doing that technique or has that special bait or that special line and you dominate the tournament and other times you're just missing that little clue, but that's, that's bass fishing. That's what keeps us all fishing. And, um, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go back. Yeah, Corey, you know, I don't really know what I was thinking, uh, <laughs> trying to compete against Jared Lintner and his partner and uh, Randy McAbee at Clear Lake in the fall. Uh, I don't think it's ever going to be my time <laughs> against those guys. Uh, hey, Jared, I do. I, I, you, I left the house early, uh, had to get back to the family. Um, I, I know you took your boy out, uh, your boy and his buddy. Uh, did you guys whack him yesterday morning? Yeah, so uh, we, we got a little bit later start, you know, the time change deal. And uh, we got out there about, I'd say, 7 30 8 o'clock um and i'm like man there's gonna be a guy on this spot the first day we had this spot all to ourselves, and we caught probably in the neighborhood of 50 bass in about an hour um a couple of nice ones you know five pounders and four pounders stuff like that uh we had a good day and then day two it, and it's just the nature of the of the beast right it, it's not a secret spot it was a community hole um we never got to fish there so day three, um, well, not day three, when I took Jaden and, and Logan out, uh, my first first three or four casts on the spot, I caught a four and a half. Uh, I told the boys where to throw and they're, they're whacking them or catching them. I mean, it was really good. So yeah, we, we caught about, I'd say around 20 bass in a little, right about an hour. That's cool. Really cool for those guys. Uh, also, uh, just a personal shout out for me and Jared. Uh, we're, we're there celebrating our good friend Bobby Doss this week, uh, who was up there and, and, and able to spend some time with us, uh, have a little barbecue. It was great seeing Bobby. Uh, so, so personal shout out there. Uh, and as much as I'd love to keep talking Clear Lake, <laughs> Jared, we're here to hear about the new Procyon ALLT spinning reels from you. Can, can you tell us a little bit about those, please? Well, you know, just, just looking at it out of the box, I got a brand new one here. Um, you know, it's aluminum, which is, it's going to keep everything real, real confined, real dense. Um, what, what I first noticed about this reel is like, well, you know, the, the main thing for me with a spinning reel is the drag. So the first thing I ever do out of the box or when I'm looking at it at Tackle Warehouse on the, on, in the retail there is I'll spin the drag and listen to it. And it's got that nice smooth sound if you ever get a spinning reel doesn't matter what brand or whatever and you're testing it out and it it has a hiccup in it that's that's not good because especially on light line if you're fishing you know four to i, I even say the eight ten pound test and it it skips or it sticks 
that's when you're going to break those fish off on that light line. So you want a really smooth drag, which originally out of the box, this thing is, I mean, it's perfect. Um, what I also noticed about it being aluminum and the way it's built is not only can I take this out to Lopez Lake or Clear Lake or wherever, but I can also put it on my surf perch rod and go right down to the beach and it's not going to rust out. I can fish it in the ocean. I can fish it for, you know, if I ever get invited, hint, to go red fishing or something like that, you know, in that brackish water, I can take this reel and fish it there. So um, really, you know, out of the box, I have not got to fish this yet, but you can see when I spin the handle, there's no wobble to it. It's just straight up and down and it's, it feels smooth. I mean, here in, a, I think, uh, what, November, December, we're gonna be going to Shasta. I'm gonna do, be doing some practicing for the uh, FLW tournaments and some other things. Um, I'm definitely gonna spool this up. What I also noticed also in reading the descriptions was they have a shallow spool and a, and a deep spool. So this one right here has got the deeper spool. So with the, you know, the evolution of the, the FG knots and, and the other connection knots, what you have is you don't need all that deep spool if, you know, if you're going to be throwing, say, a shaky head or something like that. With that small braid to a leader line, you can get away with a shallower spool. That being said, you know, I'm kind of traditional. I'm older. I'm kind of, I think I'm the oldest guy in this pack that we have on tonight, which really dates me. Um, but uh, I, I, I grew up fishing straight mono or, you know, when fluorocarbon came out, I'd line that sucker up with, you know, six or eight or 10 pound test. So, and I still do that for, for some techniques, you know, drop shot and really deep. I want a lot of line on there. Uh, where I'm not using braid so that I can fill that spool up. And again, that goes back to the salt water also. When I'm, you know, say surf perch, I'm throwing a, as far as I can out there with a big egg sinker and my little, my little grub on there, you don't want to get spooled. So I really like that deep spool, you know, that's available in these reels. Um, Mark Mills actually has told me some really in-depth kind of, you know, more spec type stuff on these reels. And I think he's going to do better. I get nerdy on that. You know, I get nerdy on that. Yeah, you're, yeah, that's, that's why I listen to you. And I ask Ayler or Cody the fishing stuff, because I think <laughs> they would know better. Well, yeah, uh, Mark, any, anything yeah. else you'd like to, uh, you'd like to chip in about yeah. the... So we brought this reel into the lineup because we really needed a, what I would consider a lightweight aluminum reel. There's plenty of reels out there that are graphite, carbon fiber, uh, Zion, all those materials, and they're great, but they all have, there's pluses and minuses to everything. Uh, the good thing about aluminum, and, and we, we shaved it down and make it as light as possible and still be aluminum, is that now, especially in the inshore, the saltwater market, we're using really heavy drag pressures, you know, catching redfish, snook, that kind of stuff. You don't, on aluminum, get any type of flame, fl flame or frame flex whatsoever. So you can see that there's there's no movement in the stem whatsoever. Also, when you'd have no flex in the reel, that keeps all the gears in precise alignment. We use cold forge aluminum and brass gears in the reel. Um, they're very strong. They're very uh, accurate, hard metals. Uh, they feel good. It's got plenty of, uh, uh, it can wear and tear with heavy drag pressures and just crank it on it heavy when you need to. Um, we use our air rotor system and our air bale. So we use a tube instead of a solid piece of wire. That does a couple of things. The, the tube keeps it from bending, so you don't see as much bend in your spinning reels if you step on it. The other thing is that it's easier to feel to flip over because you have a little bit bigger diameter, so it feels better to flip over your bale than it would be just a thin piece of wire. Um, but like I think I think Jared hit the, the, the most part of it is that it, it's really smooth. It's gonna be great for both fresh water and salt water. We considered a crossover and you know, uh, Jared's going to have a few of these this year. Jared, we're, we're lucky to have him on. I think he's been with Daiwa now for about a year, and we're able to bring him on board to the Daiwa family. And uh, he does a great job, but he's going to be able to use all the different products. You know, Cody and Brent, we keep them directed towards our whole Tatua Elite line. But uh, Jared is going to be kind of everything from way up here to down here because he has a great perspective. So he can talk to your listeners at uh, Tackle Warehouse and, and really – relate to what they're buying. 
Yeah. No, re really excited to see that and uh, and and kind of uh, let Jared expose mm -hmm. the the rest of the uh, Daiwa lineup. Uh, Tatula Elite has 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 really. Uh, I think been shown to be such a great powerhouse uh, for tournament anglers. Uh, but hey, you need some spotlight on the rest <laughs> of it, like you said, uh, uh, from the Lagoon all the way up to the Steez. Uh, so that's great. Again, that's the Procyon ALLT spinning reels that's available to buy now at Tackle Warehouse. Uh, so really, wow. we've seen a whole bunch of great new products here uh, this week, Corey. Um, you know, we've seen everything from the tiny gizmo, uh, which, which uh, we're, we're betting on Cody winning a Mayfly Hatch tournament on next year, uh, to, the, to the gizmo rod, the whole system there, the Daiwa DX swim bait rods, which I'm really excited about. Of course, the Tatula 300. I know there's gonna be guys throwing some A-rigs on this uh, in the coming months as things cool off. Of course, uh, bigger gliders, paddle tail swim baits, uh, big trout swim baits. This reel is really gonna shine for all that. Looking forward to that. Spool it up with the Daiwa J-Braid Samurai. This is the real deal. Uh, guys, guys are really excited about this. Uh, and I've been really impressed with it and the guys in the office uh, and a lot of the plastic stuff, uh, the new uh, Nico Macho and Nico Fat colors uh, are coming, uh, just some beautiful new designs, uh, really some clear water stuff. I also check out the Tackle Warehouse exclusive color. It's a green pumpkin, black, blue laminate. Uh, it's just one of our favorite colors uh, that we, we try to make sure is also made in some of our favorite baits. Uh, the Laguna LT spinning reel, awesome. And the new revamp of the CT. Uh, we've just got uh, a, a great new line from, uh, from Daiwa this year. And, and big thanks to, to our pros, um, our shared pro staff, uh, Jared Lintner, Cody Meyer, Brent Ayler, uh, for taking us through that. Um, and also Mark Mills from Daiwa. It's always a pleasure talking to Mark. Uh, just such a passion for fishing uh, and, and, and really excited to have him on. And uh, hopefully we got the whole party coming back, right, Corey? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guy. Just trying to get them all added on here. We lost everybody, but we got the whole gang all back on right now just to kind of, I guess, catch up and get everybody all at the same time. And really want to see if, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff tonight. And not all of you guys got to talk about everything. I, I really kind of want to picture, is there stuff that maybe somebody else talked about that you're excited about or some insight you had on it? I know, Jared, you specifically said, you know, you were kind of really stoked on that 300 size Tatula. Yeah, you know, um, I actually, when I got home from Clear Lake yesterday, I was sitting on my desk and I, I took it out of the box and looked at it. I'm like, oh, that's going to be perfect. You know, a lot of a rig type application, big, bigger swim baits. Now that we're getting into the winter and early spring, I mean, it's definitely, I like those bigger paddles. Uh, I like the spool holding that. The, the problem is with a lot of the reels on the market today is for a swim bait reel, you got to hold a lot of line because you're going to cast them a mile, first of all. And then, you know, you're going to throw, uh, well, for me, I'm throwing a minimum of 20 all the way up to 30. Um, so, you know, line diameter, taking up spool space. So that deep spool, bigger paddles, you know, uh, heavy drag system. I'm, I'm really excited about fishing that here. You know, it's, I should have brought it to Florida because you never, or shoot, I shouldn't have said that. I should have brought it to where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Disregard that. <laughs> I, I, I think we have the, we have the seven second delay. We'll bleep that out, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to, uh, uh, somewhat uh, not on that note, because I don't want to, whatever. I'm gonna, but everyone we got here on the call, Tack Warehouse, Daiwa Pros, all three of you guys made the MLF TOC this year. So I big congrats to all of you guys making it. We TOC. still haven't had the final outcome. Sorry, the, what is the TOC? Sorry, the World, World Championship. Championship. <laughs> we were just talking about the TOC. TOC. Hey, you, you slip, so I get my slip now, too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, Corey. Yeah. What? I make tournament of champions. Yes. These guys <laughs> make world champions. World champions, a good call. Yeah. Maybe right. one day you will see you in the world championship. Yeah, too. Well, I'm going to keep my desk job. Uh, 
but uh, we do we, we have a, a winner, right, for our trivia question? We do have the winner. So oh, uh, cool. to remind everybody, the question was, which Tackle Warehouse and Daiwa staffer signed with Daiwa the earliest, and what year did they begin the sponsorship? Corey, you got any guesses? Uh, well, I can't guess because I kind of know the oh, answer. Oh, you're looking at the answer. <laughs> you know what? I, I, when I was thinking about this, I, I, was, I, I knew it coincided with uh, the, the origins of Tattoo Elite, and time flies. I couldn't tell you if, if that was 2018 or 2012. So, I would, Jared, since you're the newest member, do you have a guess of who and when it might have been? So, it's out of Brent and Cody. Yeah, so right. it, it, it narrowed down pretty quick, yeah. So, but we don't know <laughs> who <laughs> in the year, though. The it's year. Be Aver in 14. Jared, if you were eligible, you would have won, but really you, good. you didn't win. So, a <laughs> high five for getting it right. Uh, it is Ayler back in 2014, signed with Daiwa, and the winner of the prize package is Taylor Marcel. So, huge congrats, Taylor. Make sure you get the nice, information over to our guys on social media. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty jealous of that prize package. So, uh, enjoy that. Once you get it, get some pics over us. Once you get a chance to use it on the water. Uh, he was the first to get the correct answer. Sorry, everybody else that didn't get through, but keep checking all our lives we got coming out. We'll do more of this kind of stuff. And we'll have more trivia questions uh, rolling out. Uh, going back, I guess, full circle, not full circle, going back to the, the World Championship, uh, like I said, all three of you guys made it. Uh, and I was watching this weekend, and as, if I hope you got to watch it. If not, I might ruin it for you. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, mute, I guess. But Jared, I was pulling for you big time. I really thought we had that one. And Edwin, I love you, bud, but I was really hoping that Jared's going to pull one off. So if you guys haven't had a chance, make sure to watch out or watch the MLF event. And Jared, just maybe just briefly kind of talk about that event, I guess, and, and how things kind of went for you and, and how things uh, fell, fell into place, I guess. Are you sure it, it already aired? It Did aired. I it? it aired. I watched, I watched it. So. Well, the, but yeah, so we went to a different lake uh, elimination than we did the opening round. And uh, it took me a while, man. Um, first period, I think I had one scorable bass. Uh, the second period, I made some adjustments and I started, I mean, I was catching them. And um, <clears throat> moved all the way back up, really excited about third period. And I frankly just ran out of fish. I tried to find some new stuff. I had a pretty comfortable... I guess lead or not a lead, but you know, I was way above the elimination line, felt good about it. And in the last like 20 to 30 minutes, it always happens like this in major league fishing. This is the first time it's happened to me. Uh, Edwin Evers got onto a little bite and put like seven or eight score bowls on in about 20 minutes and knocked me out. And, uh, you know, I've watched all the major league fishing shows over the years on DVR and all this stuff. And, it's not the first time it happened. Uh, it always happens to somebody. Somebody always figures something out in the last, I don't know, what would you say, Brent? 30, 45 minutes and comes from just below the cut, knock somebody else that was kind of comfortable. But that's that's fishing, man. You gotta, that's the thing that makes major league fishing so great in my opinion is it's not just, did you figure them out, you know, throughout the course of one day as you know, as far as catching a limit of fish, it's figuring out what's going on the whole day, different, different, you know, everything's different. You got to figure them out consistently. And um, man, it, 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 that one hurt because I really felt like I was going to move on and have a shot at the thing and I got eliminated, but that's life. Live What's on. crazy about that is is what people don't realize is that almost always the guys that come out and start catching them in the beginning and are leading struggle later in the day. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't tell you how many times the guys are catching them and they're leading first round and then they don't advance at the end of the day because the guys that are catching them continue to chase the morning bite. The guys that didn't catch anything in the morning are chasing a new bite the whole time. It's crazy how fast things change when you have zero practice, you have zero knowledge of the lake, you're going out there, you have no idea what to expect. You're constantly searching. 
it's so hard to try and figure out how to catch them when you're on time format like that and you're watching guys catch them and you're trying stuff and you have no idea what's going on. It's, it's insane how fast it happens. You have no time to just basically try new things. You can't practice. You have to, you have to jump on them. If you don't jump on them, you're not advancing. Good point. Yep. Yeah, that's an, I never even thought about that. That's an excellent point about chasing that bite and getting stuck in that bite and kind of like trying to ride that bite through it and not really kind of moving on to the next one. And uh, someone that did ride their bite through and advanced all the way to the uh, the shock or to the sudden death was Cody. You won the shotgun round, right? I did. Yes, I won our opening round. Um, you know, there's two groups in the world championship and I forget how many there were in each one's, but each group. But the, the one thing that was cool is if you won the round, you won the day, you advanced directly into the sudden death. And that was a really cool day. We fished Lake Pokagama, uh, started off really slow. Like Brent was mentioning a couple guys. I remember Mark Rose jumping out there, Jeff Sprague that bite really slowed and, and I ended up catching them um, uh, all on a wacky rig, uh, you know, Gary on Moto Cinco. It was uh, color 301, you know, green pumpkin and uh, you know, with some flake in there, really, really cool. And what I noticed is the shallower the dock, the better um, had to have sand on it. If it had a lot of sand on it, it was, it was amazing. You can, uh, you could skip that sink under there. You would catch a fish. There would be four or five. They'd come out with it. It would go right back in there and I'd catch every single one of those. And, you know, by the time the day was done, I had uh, 68 scoreable bass, 123 pounds. I, I lost a dozen of them. Just really, honestly, an amazing day. And that was a, that was a really fun place. And I know, you know, we all fished that lake, uh, or Jared was in my group. We fished that lake day one, and then those guys went to a different lake day two. And then uh, I can't I can't spoil the rest, but, yeah, the sudden death round is really exciting. And uh, and going on from there, really cool stuff happened. It was, a, it was an awesome area. Uh, fishing was just great, but that day was really fun. I mean, catching that many fish. And uh, just to be able to get bit, I mean, cast after cast after cast was made it just an outstanding day, of course. Really cool. Well, it, it looks like we can catch up on, uh, on how that <laughs> tournament uh, panned out just in a few days here. Uh, it, uh, on the 7th. You gotta, yeah, air. you got to note that it's airing the 7th. So uh, I, I, I guess everyone at home and us uh, tune in to, to check out how that goes. Uh, really excited and congratulations uh, to you guys on on the successes you guys had uh, in that tournament. Um, putting that Daiwa ge gear to work, I guess, huh? Yeah, I mean, it has to be something. Yeah. TW Daiwa, that combination to get three guys and in, 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 to make that event. Uh, there's something going on there. I mean, I'm not saying some major good <laughs> good mojo or whatever it is, but uh, Team it was Taco Warehouse shirt that Cody's wearing right now. Yeah, that's what uh, brought him good luck. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> nice, guys. And so everybody's traveling. Uh, looking forward to catch up with you guys, catching up with you guys on the next event. Mills, are you, uh, are you staying in Southern California for the time being? Or are you, uh, you, you got anything planned? You getting on the road? I, uh, I actually this year, no, I, I'm staying home right now. Uh, we're not really, we're kind of banned to travel until they figure this thing out. Um, we're tr still, everybody's trying to figure out trade shows this year. What's going on? Uh, we just learned the Miami boat show's not going to happen this year. Fort Lauderdale was last weekend. It was a little slow, but Miami pulled out. So I, I, I'm staying home. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, Brent and I are going to do some filming on Wednesday uh, out at the lake. So uh, we're going to do a little filming, and I'm going to probably spend the rest of the afternoon after filming and fishing a little bit. So, uh, They're biting. Uh, yeah. So, huh? What's that? They're biting. That's uh, I know. Uh, well, I'm going to follow you around all day. I'll figure it out. So, uh, so all my I'm at home right now, so it'll be good. Sounds good. Uh, well, guys, thank you all so much for your time, uh, taking us through the, the new Daiwa product for this year. Uh, so much of this has already landed and is available to buy right now. Uh, more uh, that, that we mentioned is still available mm -hmm. for pre-order, is continuing to show up. Um, and, and, and really just, you know, if there's one 
bright spot of this year. <laughs> it's that people have been at home like you, Mark, and available uh, it's to be with their families and fish. And, and uh, it's really awesome seeing all, all these new anglers and, and new products for great companies like Daiwa, uh, getting people out on the water, it, spending it some quality time. This is a great deal as far as on the water. I'm just going to give you, I know everybody is getting late and everything, but the going, I, I'm on the ASA, uh, um, actually I'm part of the ASA committee, and they saw 8 million new licenses sales this year. 8 million new license sales, which is huge. Um, so that gets you, lets us you know, you know that all the, the boat companies, they're selling boats. So this has been a benefit to the fishing industry, you know. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is taking a while to get to the dealers, but it's just great. Eight million new licenses, that means people are fishing, and that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's great news for everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's something we love. Uh, excited to share it with some new people. Mark, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, Cody, thank you. Brent, thank you. Jared, thank you. You guys all travel safe. Uh, uh, we're pulling for you guys in these next derbies. Looking forward to seeing how that last event uh, played out and uh, have a great night everybody. Corey? Yeah, everybody thanks for tuning in and watching the live here. Uh, we'll be doing more of these stuff coming down the road. We'll try to keep them a little more consistent. We're still kind of figuring this stuff out. Uh, with, again, all these new anglers, we're busy as heck, so we got a lot going on here, but hopefully get more of this kind of live stuff, bring you guys more new product. If you guys got other stuff you want to see or you got questions or comments, let us know. We, we're doing this to bring you guys the new stuff. We want to keep you guys informed, keep you guys entertained. So if you guys want to see something from us, you let us know. Get there on social media and uh, just we, we enjoy doing this kind of stuff. It's fun. It's a lot of work to get it done, but it's cool that we can do this now. We everybody get on Zoom and just bring everybody together uh, from across the country, across the world, really. So uh, it's been a lot of fun doing these. So again, big thanks to all you guys. Unless you guys got something else you guys want to say, we're probably going to wrap it up here. But Brent, Jared, Cody, you guys all good? Yep. Good to go. Good. All right, fellas. Thanks so much for joining us. Folks, this has been the Tackle Warehouse Live Daiwa Power Hour. <laughs> uh, we're signing off here on the West Coast. I'm ready to go home and get some dinner. Corey, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks at home for joining us. Congratulations to our winner of the prize package. Great knowledge on uh, the Daiwa Tackle Warehouse Pro Staff there, uh, and congratulations on your, pro, uh, your prize pack. Thanks for your viewership. Corey, good night. We're out. You guys, tune in next time for more power hour or two hours, I guess, apparently because it's been more than an hour. But thanks a lot, everybody tuning in. See you guys next time.